Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are streaming Verde Beach on pause, apparently. <laughs> How is everyone doing today? <laughs> I see Robin says, Go Pack Go from Southern Germany. Love it, love it. Uh, really happy that you are all joining. Holy cow, there's a, there's a number of you in here, 675 of you. Uh, before I ask where you all are from, like I normally do, I want to let you all know that there may be a jump scare at some point during this stream. <laughs> the reason for that is I ordered a package and uh, FedEx is delivering. And I think in the if you watch the last Clearwater County video, you'll, you will have heard my rant about FedEx. They delivered one of the packages to me this morning, but the second one's coming. <laughs> and it might be here in the next hour and my dog will go crazy. So I will need to go and calm him down. It'll only take a minute, but I just wanted to let you all know. So if it happens and I disappear for a second, I will let you know. <laughs> so how's everyone doing today? Where is everyone tuning in from? Oh, my, my mic volume is not high enough, apparently. It's all a bit quiet. Let me see. How is this? Is this better? <laughs> Some people like the idea of a jump scare. Okay, uh, let me know music volume, mic volume. This is the problem with uh, not streaming all that often. In fact, the last time I streamed was May 4th. So almost three months ago. <laughs> so I see Kentucky, Indiana, Austin, Brazil, Wausau, Wisconsin, love it. <laughs> I think you know that Wasa has a special place in my heart. South Africa, Belgium, Melbourne, Australia, Kansas, Montana, Idaho, Canada, Florida, the Netherlands, Morocco, Barcelona, Buenos Aires, Brazil, Switzerland, Philadelphia, Mississippi. I don't know there's a Philadelphia, Mississippi. That's cool. Ohio, Quad Cities, Cape Town, holy cow, all over the world, Virginia, Beach, Tennessee, Nairobi, all over the place. Rio de Janeiro, Cologne, Dallas, Barcelona, Turkey. I see some familiar faces in here. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I wanted to stream today for a few reasons. First of all, I just miss streaming. Uh, it's one of those things that I don't do often enough, but I probably should do a heck of a lot more. Because uh, there are a number of things in builds that are just really difficult to work in the videos. And it is an opportunity for me to talk with you guys a little bit more than I normally have the opportunity to do. So we're going to do some of those things today. We're going to work on a couple of things that are challenging to fit into a video. One of those things is going to be taking a look at our districts before we turn around and build a hillside neighborhood over here. This is going to be a really fun development, I think. We're going to try to boost the land values up and build some luxury housing make a quasi gated community sort of feel over here and it'll be uh, it'll be something different than the rest of the of uh, the build i see a madison up in here <laughs> i love it i love it greetings from disney world holy cow santa monica we used to be neighbors i lived in west la for a while uh minnesota from verde beach i love that <laughs> uh yes three million dollars in the bank 200,000 people were finally above it. Another Madison. I love it. I love it. Uh, so I also wanted to discuss City Skylines 2. I've gotten a lot of questions about City Skylines 2, my involvement in it. I've gotten questions about uh, what is going to happen with these series once City Skylines 2 comes out. Oh, static video. Should, I wasn't moving. It was, it was my fault. It's not a static video. <laughs> uh, so... I think I'll start there. And basically, once City Skylines 2 comes out, we are gonna pivot all the content on the channel to City Skylines 2. So my goal is to wrap up all of the series before City Skylines 2 comes out. So thankfully, Nicolay Bay was supposed to be a short run series. It's almost done. Uh, we are going to head back to Marquette Island and do a bit more work there. We've got a little bit of work to do around the university. And then we will basically wrap the series up. Nicolay Bay, or Verde Beach is gonna wrap itself up. <laughs> we don't have all that many nodes left. So we've got a couple of episodes left in us. And then for Clearwater County, we are in a, an interesting spot. There was a place where the story was supposed to go and I didn't have the heart to take it there. 
So as a result, as a result, Clearwater County is going to be in a, in a different, different, it's going to be a, a different ending than I initially intended to have. Uh, first of all, I, I'm also missed a couple of super chats. Thomas Salata, been here since Bluffside Crossing. Love it. Thank you so much for the super chat. And Vey, member for 18 months. Thank you so much. I hope someone mods Phil when <laughs> two L's in the city's got, yeah, I hope so too. And Kaylin, thank you so much for becoming an associate planner. So that's the goal. The goal is to wrap all the stories up uh, by October 24th when City Skylines 2 comes out. I don't want to leave any cliffhangers. I don't want to unceremoniously end the series. I really dislike when that happens. The music is too loud. I'll turn it down a little bit more. Uh, I really dislike when that happens in series. So that is what I'm really hoping to avoid. Music sounds good. Turn the music down. I turn it down a little bit. So hopefully it's it's better now. Uh, the original ending for Clearwater County was supposed to be. I mean, I'm going to do a poll. I want to know if you guys want to know what the original ending for Clearwater County was supposed to be or not, because I, I'm happy to tell you. But if you don't want to know, I'm happy not to tell, too. So let's. Let's ask it as a poll. Do you want to do you want to know the original ending of Clearwater County? Yes or no? OK. Jordan, thank you so much for the super chat. I'm going to the 794 project meeting in Milwaukee on Tuesday. We need the Boulevard alternative. I really hope they do it. What is your opinion on the project? I'm also from down Dodge County. Uh, I do not. I do not actually. I'm not familiar with that project. So I uh, I mean, I'm in the Madison area. So I know some of what's going on in the Milwaukee area, but generally just the, the big stuff. So I apologize. I do not know much about that one. Everyone votes. <laughs> 93% <laughs> yes so far. Okay, so the whole reason Clearwater County exists, the whole reason is I wanted to tell the story of uh, basically urban renewal. And I was going to blast the highway through the very middle of Van Buren and then work to repair it. That said, once Van Buren got to where it was and we still didn't have the highway going through it, you saw the two ends, they were meeting up and they just, I didn't have the heart to blast all the way through. So I think there are some things that we could do that might be a little surprising still, but that was, that was the, that was where it was supposed to go. Ted Lattice, thank you so much for the super chat. So yeah, I don't <laughs> bring back Bluffside Crossing. So I thought about bringing back Bluffside Crossing for uh, the Abandoned City series. <laughs> so. I don't know. I don't know. Not sure how you guys would feel about that. Uh, that said, uh, speaking of that note, uh, I am going to be mixing things up a little bit more with the content. I just, for me, it, it is the last challenge video I did was really refreshing for me. It was something that I haven't, uh, I haven't had that much fun making a video in a long time. And as a result, the next video that's coming up on Saturday is going to be a challenge video. So yeah, we're going to be doing a, a few more of those sorts of things as well. So we will see. All right. What I want to focus on real quick is getting rid of some districts. We're going to need a district today and we have some issues. So I, I think if you watched a few videos ago, we actually cannot create any more districts. When I go to do that, cannot create any more objects of this type. That said, a while back, we separated this neighborhood into phases. Now, some of these phases do have themes attached to it. So we've got to be very careful, <laughs> but some of these do not. They're just labeling phases. Things like this, phase 6B. This is simply labeling that doesn't need to be there. So before we begin our build today, we need to clear up some of these. So... That'll be something that we do. And I'll, I'll answer a couple of questions while they come up uh, and get into City Skylines 2 as well. First, uh, Mystic, Mystic Fan 13, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate that. Really appreciate the support, everyone. It's been the last little while on the channel has been absolutely wild. Uh, DMC, thank you for becoming an associate planner. And Halkin Guard, 
Thank you so much uh, for the super chat. Hey, CPP, love your videos. You and your voice have been helping my 10 month old to sleep since he was born. Cheers. Happy to help. Happy to help. Anything I can do. It's funny. I didn't realize that my voice had that effect on people, but I should have known when uh, my wife and I started dating. She actually would fall asleep on our on our calls all the time. <laughs> I, had, I had no idea. So <laughs> anything I can do to help, I'm happy to do it. Uh, here's another district. Phase seven didn't really matter. So we'll get rid of that one as well. And I believe phase four is another one. Now, one of these districts, I want to say it's right here. This is a green cities district. So we have to leave that one alone. Ray, thank you so much. Yeah, hit that like button or just leave an emoji for engagement. One of the two. <laughs> Andrew, you're in Spain. I, I think the last time we spoke, you had just gotten back from Spain. Uh, and Sir Crute, yeah, it, 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 this is Verde Beach. Tech Mike, thank you for becoming an associate planner. So there's a few more districts. I'm not gonna go heavy on getting rid of districts, but Myrtle Heights is one that I absolutely want to. I'm gonna pause this for a minute. So we have two districts here. Hamilton Square is for this hotel. I don't know. I think we'll leave the hotel. And then this one right here is an entertainment district. So if we get rid of Myrtle Heights here, I should, in theory, be able to assign this theme to the pedestrian district. So this is the sort of thing that I've got to kind of go through and do. So let's see. So Cities Skylines 2. Uh, the question I think that I've received more than almost any other is what is my level of involvement in that? And I, it's... Uh, it's Sardiner. Thank you so much for the support. Do I have any plans for City Skylines 2 Beginners Guide? Wraps right into this. So my level of involvement has been that I get early access to some of the materials. That The reason I'm able to put together my videos uh, for Mondays as quickly as I can is because of that, uh, that early access. As far as access to the game, I've not had access to the game. And truthfully, you know, I mean, obviously, City Skylines is my favorite game. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. I, it, it would have been really cool to have early access to the game at the same time. I wouldn't necessarily want to navigate through knowing things and not being able to say them because of an NDA or something like that. Uh, Liscosity, thank you so much. Holy cow, 20 gifted uh, memberships, whole bunch of new planners. I'm going to tell all of the new planners, anyone that's in there, there are two videos in the in the in the in the Vimeo right now that are up there. One of them is finished, and the other one is a Clearwater County that it, it, it's a rough cut, but it's pretty good. So go check them out. Go check them out. Uh, and thank you all. Or thank you so much for the support, Liscosity. That was very generous of you. I appreciate that. So anyway, back to back to what I was saying. Yeah, I have not had any direct involvement. I do not anticipate that I will have any uh, for the. Uh, and that's completely fine by me. It's certainly, you know, a privilege to have the access that I do have. I appreciate it. it helps me put the videos out that I have been putting out. So I, 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 I'm, I'm completely fine with it, with, with it being as it is. That said, when the game is released, or if I ever do get access, one of my priorities will be before I start a series is likely going to be a beginner's guide. I want to be able to master the game and teach you guys everything I know. And so that's that's gonna be the priority for me. So there will be an ultimate beginner's guide to City Skylines too, just like I put together for City Skylines. That is gonna be something that I, I really focus on heavily up front. So uh, that has been something that I've been asked quite a bit. Uh, streaming tends to get a lot of donations, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it does okay. I, I, and I, I just really appreciate the support. Uh, let's see. Take a couple more questions. What is the access that you do have? Just to the video that, that uh, everyone gets to see on Monday and, and the, the text from the website. So it's all, basically, I am a couple of days ahead of you guys. It's nothing huge. So it's, uh, it's enough. I, I think it's honestly kind of the sweet spot because it gives me the opportunity to be really perceptive and spend a bit of time really deep diving in my videos for Mondays have been basically 4,000 word video essays with a 20 minute reaction video tacked onto the back of it. So 
that is I wouldn't want the complication of not not knowing if I can say something. So right now I don't have to worry about that. So it's it's kind of a good spot to be in if you think about it from that perspective. Will I cover camera controls and how to change them? I I, I want to have the most comprehensive guide I can I can put together. So yeah. Whatever I can cover, I'll probably solicit topic ideas from Discord. Uh, that's that's one of the things. Right now, I'm I'm spread a bit thin, but I really hope that I can uh, I can hop in Discord and ask you guys what you want to know. Uh, Stan, thank you so much. Congrats on five uh, five hundred forty one thousand subs. Yeah, it's been it's been wild. The the sub count has been growing really rapidly lately. It's been, the 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 channel just generally has been very. Um, it's been wild. <laughs> so really appreciate all of the support, everybody. Uh, love from India. Thank you so much. You found an East. Let's see. Uh, Mariah found an Easter egg in City Skylines. One about City Skylines. Two that you wanted to share. You click on a sim and it says driving home to play City Skylines 2. That is a nice detail. That is a nice detail. Uh, have I ever seen Flux Trance? I mean, has, has anyone uh, not seen Flux Trance at like City Skylines videos? I would still recommend Flux Trance videos today, even though they're they're older. Uh, at this point, just really some really awesome stuff. Did I did I essentially replace him? I don't think so. I think that Flux Trance was very special. I I'm personally hoping that some of the YouTubers that have disappeared and gone on to do other things come back for City Skylines too. I'd love to see that diversity of voices. I don't think that there's there's room for everybody. I guess if that makes any sense. So hoping that we we get to see that but you know at the same time i get it like being a youtuber is, is an interesting thing because you have this schedule um i think that i mean i see i see cities by diana's in here so she, you know diana gets it uh anytime you're doing anything like this there's just a i think there's a lot of internal pressure that you can place on yourself so i could see there was a point in time where I think I hit an area where I could have burnt out. And I, I wonder if that, you know, that could have happened to some of the, the YouTubers that call, call the quits or you just get, you run out of ideas or you just lose the passion for it. Uh, Dorian, thank you so much for becoming an associate planner. Gunna Ben from, from Germany. Thank you. Uh, Justra, thank you so much. Thank you for being a, supporter as well uh toby asks what i think city skylines 2 on console will be like so there have already been confirmation that it's supposed to be basically at parity with city skylines uh on the pc i think that's the goal and I, you know this is wild speculation on my behalf but i think that that's one of the reasons why i've, I've the Probably the number one question that I see on every single City Skylines video I release, City Skylines 2, is what's going on with Mac ver the, the Mac version of City Skylines? And I personally think, uh, by the way, before I finish this thought, we're going to switch Five Pillars Square to the Heart of Korea theme. This is going to be kind of a, a big change for this entire area, but this has been something I've wanted to do for a while, so we will, we will switch that over. And I will need to remove theme here there we go so we're gonna see this whole area these zone in a second uh, so my my theory is that they because they are trying to have feature parity between all these different versions uh they are focused on the ones that are easiest to code and i'm not sure that they are are if they're if they're working on all these themselves that they have the expertise in mac gaming so i'm really hopeful you know, as a Mac user, primary Mac user myself, my hope is that the new Metal Translation trans translation layer uh, for Mac gaming helps port this thing over. We will see. Uh, do I think there will be controller support for PC then? I would I would assume so. I mean, right now, I think you if you wanted controller support, you could get it through Game Pass, and you'd be able to use a controller then. Let's see. Shadow Legend says, I have a confession. I'm a console player who saw your tutorial city, saw Verity Beach, and then decided to copy it street for street. Max out at 90,000. <laughs> Thanks for your first 90,000 city. That's awesome. That is awesome. Um, 
Rick, thank you so much for becoming associate planner. Uh, RB asks if I have any new merch. I have a ton of new merch. There's a new merch store right now, actually. So if you go to cityplannerplays.com, I actually just switched vendors. The, so this is something I went through for a while. I was receiving some complaints about the quality of some of the merch. And so I, I bought some myself that people were having specific concerns about and decided to basically wash the heck out of it and see what would happen. And I had some of the same issues. So I switched to a different vendor. The sweatshirts are softer. So are the shirts. I added some children's clothes. I added baby clothes. I took ideas from different people. I commissioned a Discord member uh, for their work. And we have some new Verde Beach Metro cups, lots of different things. So I'm um, really pleased with the way that the new merch store has come out. We've got bigger cups, which I care about because I like big coffee mugs. And I think just higher quality merch generally. So, and then the reason why it took so long is I ordered basically every piece of merch on the store and gave it a shot. Everything from hats to mugs to sweatshirts, t-shirts. I have a new uh, Verde Beach Metro um, a poster in my office, the, 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 the frame picture. So lots and lots of stuff. Holy cow. James, thank you so much for the gifted memberships. Anyone who just got a gifted membership, like I mentioned earlier, if you go to the community tab, there's a link to a Vimeo folder. Go check it out. There's two new videos in there that have not been released. I don't know when the Clearwater County will be released, but it's on there. So check it out. James, you are amazing. Thank you so much for the support. I see a whole bunch of new members in there. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, Definitely recommend the Metro map. You got it on your wall. Miles, 30, 33 miles. Anthony, thank you so much. That is awesome. I'm glad you like that. All right, so I'm going to speed this along because I'm really interested in seeing what this district looks like now that we've changed this, and I'll keep ads. Ads. Well, I'm sorry. I don't know why those are happening. <laughs> I, I didn't hit a button to do an ad. If I were going to do it, it would have been like when, when the FedEx guy came. <laughs> so don't know why. Where's the merch store? Uh, cityplannerplays.com. Let's see. And that, that, that just, that didn't work. So there's a ton more stuff that I want to add to that website as well. One of the things that I've been looking to add is an ethics statement, uh, particularly as it relates to sponsorships and things of that nature. And I am, I am right now personally very tired because I spent all night working on master plan music. Um, work getting every song whitelisted has been more of a more of a thing than i expected so that that has been something that i've been working on now the ball's out of my court i did all the things i'm supposed to do so i'm hoping in the next couple of weeks i will be able to just kind of release it to the world and whoever wants to use master plan music will have the opportunity to do so uh sam asks if i've ever thought about the no tax city challenge i have not but that sounds like a fun one i will definitely i will definitely give that a shot uh Seeger, thank you so much for the super chat. I love your videos. You made me check. You made me come back to City Skylines after a while of not playing uh more than once. Thanks for that. Thank you so much. Robin, almost plan anniversary. That is awesome. That's a good reminder. I need to add some new uh membership badges badges. Thank you so much for 11 months of support. So we slowly have our new part of Korea building zoning in here. And look at that. Just if this is what this district really needed, I have never used this this uh, content creator pack. So I've heard mixed things about it that some of the, well, so I, I take that back. I plopped a couple of buildings in Nicolay Bay. That's about all I've done. So yeah, that it's it's, uh, it's good to good to finally get this, this in here. I see a question from Guru asking if I make music. Uh, I do not make music. I've been working with different producers to ghostwrite some music. So. I've worked with six now, and the project I'm working on right now, we've been going back and forth. I actually had a conversation this morning with him and just banger after banger after banger. I'm really excited. I really, I really want um, music that I just, I, I, that I really like. So really, really hoping for that. And that that's something that all of the support for the channel helps fund. I've been basically taking a bunch of money and just pouring it into uh, 
but, but you know, basically paying producers to make music for the channel. So it's been a lot of fun. Uh, when will Nicolay Bay get I ninety eight? That is a good. That is a good point. We need to we need to add that. That is a great point, Weather Star. We will get that soon. Airport tour. <laughs> we can take a look at the airport and then we'll go over and start building our new district. I'm nervous to look over here because every now and then when I do, we see stuff like this. What is going on here? <laughs> this guy's just like deciding to go in reverse and there's things happening. <laughs> Robin says, go Badgers. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, Eric says, can I make a video that includes canals? I would love to see my perspective. So yes, I was meaning to do that here. I was meaning to actually get to that in Verde Beach. It's probably not going to happen here. We'll have to see how we can make that happen. Uh, Sam asks, face reveal at 100,000. We've already passed that. We already passed it a while ago. At a, at a million, maybe. At a million, maybe. I, I, so I've, I've thought about about the whole face reveal thing and uh it might happen at some point i've uh the thing about being a faceless youtuber you get the good and the bad there's good and bad that comes with it so the good is you might not realize this but i'm an introvert i i'm in my basement playing a video game and really enjoying it i now they're granted there's 1200 of you in here with me but I generally like being alone from time to time with my own thoughts. So as soon as you face reveal, you lose that bit of anonymity that I really, I've, I value. It's one of the reasons I love urban environments is when you want to be seen, you can be seen. When you want to be anonymous, you can be anonymous. And the moment I do that, I lose that. That said, there are things like VidCon that I got invited to. I was able to have a table and meet people, but it's hard to meet people when you are a faceless YouTuber. So yeah, it's 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 one of those things. But like Memo from uh, Essex says, don't do a face reveal, it ruins the magic. You know, uh, it, it's one of those things that's very challenging. So I'm not sure exactly what I want to do. So right now, I think I'm happy as is. And there are certainly people who have figured out who I am. I've met a few of you. <laughs> so, uh, it, you know, it's 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 fine. I'm, I'm, right now, I'm happy as is. I see a lot of people just saying, stay anonymous. I like that. I like that. So the, the thing I really, really like about it is the people who have figured it out, um, you kind of get treated differently. And I don't necessarily want to be treated differently. I like to just be a normal person. And, uh, you know... Uh, here, I'll, 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 let me talk about what we're about to do, and then I'll tell you a story about this past weekend. <laughs> do a face reveal and make it fill the groundhog. <laughs> Appalachian Patrick, I like that. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do, I want to run a highway up here so I can do this while we're chatting. I'm going to basically sever this interchange right here. We're going to come up and meet up with a highway here and run a two-lane highway up this area. Because this is an exclusive area, because it's going to be kind of a gated area, I think the highway is the appropriate treatment in this area. So there won't be any sidewalks to get here. It is going to be kind of a ridiculous uh, area from accessibility and, and basically most perspectives outside of privacy. But that is going to be what this area is all about. So we'll start on that and then I will talk a little about this weekend. So I had a block party this past weekend and it was a ton of fun. Yeah, all the neighbors got together. We blocked off the street. We had food trucks and all the kids were hanging out. We had a crazy thunderstorm, which was an absolute blast. So I'm, I'm up there and I'm holding a tent. So the tent is basically like flapping in the wind. A lot. We, we end up with lightning. We have thunder. It's going wild. And I'm having a great time. But eventually folks find out that, uh, you know, the question that comes up, and I think this is a, a uniquely American thing. Maybe it's not uh, as common everywhere else, is, but the people ask you, the very first thing they ask you is, what do you do? And a couple people knew what I did. So I mentioned it, um, you know, because I kind of tiptoed around some of the, the YouTube stuff, but it ended up coming out while I was using the restroom and then everyone in my block basically found out. So 
it became a, a thing and now people treat me differently. And yeah, it's one of those things that I want to, I want to avoid. <laughs> so that won't be uh that that's, that's one of the things about face revealing is all of a sudden everyone knows and everyone treats you differently. So I bumped into a YouTuber that I really like who lives in the Madison area. And even he looked just like, you know, when I recognized him, we we're at the bar, uh, you know, the, I think his first inclination was to be a little bit irritated and uh, wanting his privacy, too, because I think he's a fairly, <laughs> you know, a fairly uh, private person. And then I basically let him know, I actually am a big fan of your content and I'm a content creator myself. I've never actually met another YouTuber and I just wanted to chat. And uh, that seemed to kind of break the ice. But I get it. You know, like if you're a person that likes to be private, that would really change the dynamic there. So I'm not ruling it out, but I also don't want to alienate people and make it a, a weird thing. So we will see. I've basically created a setup where if I wanted to, I could. And there are certain people who have seen me, uh, like some of the other content creators. So yeah. And I am missing a whole bunch of super chats. I apologize. Diana, thank you so much. Uh, CPP. VTuber avatar when, <laughs> you know, you never know. Maybe, maybe soon. Uh, Monsi, thank you so much for the nine months of membership. You're so excited. You need to learn interchanges. So this is going to be a real basic one. We're just going to modify this. So we don't need to, here's the thing. Most of the time you don't need to get super complicated with things. What we have right here is already almost good enough. We just need to do a couple of things to make this work. So it's not that, not that big of a deal. Uh, and thank you so much for the gifted membership as well. So let's see. Skadoodles, thank you. Thank you for being here. Have fun babysitting. <laughs> Plot twist, I'm Chuckles. You never know. You never know. We've got Chucky's Chuckles storyline story to finish. Uh, Verde Beach is still near the game limits. Yes. Now, there's going to be something really interesting that we're about to have happen. That... I'm not sure why it's going to happen, but I'm going to be able to create exactly one outside connection. So this road is going to actually have traffic on it. I don't know why, but it will. So I've, I tested this because I just wanted to know, will it work? So I don't know if it's one of the mods that I have in the build or what the case may be, but something is allowing it and I'm going to take advantage. So hopefully you guys will indulge me there. Zukaboa. Love to see you here. How you doing? It's what, what time is it by you? It's not it's not a good time in Europe, I don't think. So I apologize for that. Uh, and it says Phil's the type of guy to generally apologize all the time. It's my my upper Midwest nature. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that you know, it, it, the, uh, if you're if you're from the upper Midwest, you probably apologize more than you should. <laughs> I'm not as bad as someone from Minnesota though. But I'm, I'm, I'm not too far off. <laughs> uh, Chuckles becomes governor. I don't know. I don't know. You never know. Uh, what do we got cooking today? Right now, we are building a gated community. But before we do that, we're adding this highway out of town. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, but I think that we're going to be able to create one outside connection, which makes absolutely no sense. But we're going to go for it. We'll see if it actually works. For whatever reason, when I was just kind of fooling around a bit, it did work. And I was absolutely baffled. So right now, what we're doing is switch backing up. I want to leave right about here. I think that this is an appropriate place to leave, probably diagonally through here. Uh, MP Campos, thank you so much for the super chat. So why am, why am I moving? Basically, because all my neighbors discovered that I'm responsible for the thousands of deaths for lack of water. <laughs> While I was planting palm trees down, you know, I think we've all been there. I think we've all been there where we have inadvertently killed our cities because we're just having such a good time landscaping. And trust me, we're going to have a good time landscaping today. <laughs> so I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the support. Uh, yeah, so it's awesome to have Zucaboa and Cities by Diana in here. Absolutely love their content. If you have not checked them out, highly recommend you do so. That's one of the things about YouTube that's that's interesting is once you get a certain amount of support, the support just keeps coming in 
And I think it's really tough. The first, let's say the first 10,000 subscribers are the hardest ones that you'll ever get. Honestly, the first 100 subscribers are the hardest you'll ever get. Now, there are some people in here, like Andrew's in here, who was one of the first 100 subscribers. I remember seeing Andrew uh, in the bluff side crossing comments, encouraging me and letting me know that that he was watching, that he cared about what I was doing, that it was that it was something that was interesting to, to him and, and it meant the world to me. Um, that said, if you want to get beyond that, it, it's really hard. So I would highly encourage you to check out their channels. They're doing some excellent things, very creative builds. I think that Diana is, in my opinion, the funniest City Skylines YouTuber, the absolute funniest, just super creative videos that if I just, if I need a smile, that's where I go. And Zuka Boa, just awesome vanilla builds, awesome vanilla builds. Christian, thank you so much for the super chat. Wanted to ask you, I uh, wanted to ask about you and Colossal Order. You did content for the airports uh, DLC, so I've been surprised not to see you as involved with the city's skylines to roll out. Yeah, so I've, I've worked with, with Colossal Order and Paradox a couple of times. So I worked on the airports DLC. I worked on the global build-off uh, back in 2021. I actually had, I actually had uh, COVID during it, and it was kind of a mess. Uh, and I also, two things that you guys might not be aware of that I worked on is I worked on the remastered cities for City Skylines Remastered on the Xbox and PlayStation. So that was something that um, I actually didn't have an Xbox. And I picked one up specifically to work on that project. And it was absolutely phenomenal. And I, so I used that as kind of an opportunity. <laughs> Because in the future, I know how many people play on the console and I might do something on the console. Not 100% sure what that would be at this time, but that, that might be a, a route that we go. That said, if they are truly at parity, maybe not. Uh, as far as why I'm not involved in City Skylines 2, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're a private company. They can do whatever they want. I would, you know, I, I mentioned this earlier in the stream. I'm not even sure that it would be in my best interest to be involved because of the videos that I put out on Monday. I, they're really stress-free for me right now. I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to worry about breach of, of NDAs or, or anything like that. I just have to tell you guys how I feel and what I'm observing. And there's a lot of freedom in that. So in, in a, from a certain perspective, I really kind of appreciate that. And I also think it's good to, that for other people have opportunities. Like when I saw that Toady got to create a city, I was really excited. That was, I mean, that's, I'm going to, you know, right now with how big the channel is, people are tuning in, you know, already. So I would really love to see other people get that opportunity too. I mean, that's, so that's for me, that's that I, I think it's great that other people are getting opportunities. Uh, as far as some of the other people that they're working with, I mean, Fossil Order has a long history with Biffa and $2.20. So I think that it makes perfect sense that they were asked to put together cities. So I have a history. It's not as long. I'm looking to continue to, to build that relationship. I get to chat with them from time to time. And I appreciate the opportunity to do so. So uh, I'm, I'm completely fine not having access right now. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, all of those creators that are checking, that are doing those things, I highly recommend check out their videos when they have an opportunity to talk about it. I thought Biffa's video talking about his experience uh, playing City Skylines was after City Skylines Two was was uh, excellent. Whoa, <laughs> that was not what I wanted to do. Uh, and I'd highly recommend you check that out. Toady had an excellent video as well, two dollars twenty. Uh, the other thing, the other reason, selfishly, why I'm happy not to have access is I'm still really enjoying playing City Skylines, and. I could see a world where you get access to City Skylines 2, and that's all you want to play. <laughs> so I would like to be able to finish up these series and still have fun while I'm playing. Every single episode that I put together, I'm just I'm just a dude having fun. So that is I wouldn't want to lose that. And I think that I could 
if I if I had access. So uh, for all those reasons, I'm I'm quite happy with my lot in life. <laughs> I think everything's just fine. So yeah, a terrain mistake there. <laughs> uh, Toadie just made a new series too. All right, yeah, check out Toadie's new series. And yeah, Zukaboa, yeah, best to enjoy what we have right now. Uh, the other, the other thing, I mean, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I feel very privileged to have what I do have, you know, so I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily need it. It's going to be coming out sooner rather than later anyway. It's fine. We'll be, we'll, I'm, I'm, I'm a patient person. If there's anything that I've tried to demonstrate on my channel, it's that being patient besides respecting the topography, putting your water pipes under your road, uh, it's that you should probably be patient when you play a game like this. This is not a speedrunning type of game, unless you're explicitly speedrunning, which I generally don't do. So, yeah. Uh, do I still play for fun? Ray, that's a great question. I, you know, so I will sit down and I will play for a couple of hours in each of my series. I don't have a city outside of the series going, if that's your question. I am actively just playing these ones all of that said i do play for fun within these series to get ideas so i will sit down and just play for like three or four hours and get ideas i will jot things out on paper to try to see how things will look i will test different things out so yeah i mean i'm playing for fun but it's definitely also for the series so it's not it's not the way it was but i play for fun you know, here's the, the 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 one thing that I was worried about when City Skylines 2 was initially announced. I the game I play for fun the most is Civ 5. How long is this road? It's wild. This is gonna be a long road. We still gotta make it all the way up to there. So it's gonna be a long one. Uh Civ 5. I have Civ 6, and I have continued to purchase DLC hoping that I will like it. And I just, I just don't like Civ 6. I don't know why. I really want to like Civ 6. It's just never going to happen. So that was what I was initially worried about with City Skylines 2. The more and more I see of it, the, the more and more excited I am. And the more and more I think as soon as I play it, I'm going to be done with City Skylines. So yeah, very, <laughs> it definitely has me feeling, feeling very strange, especially considering how many hours I put into this game over the years. Uh, this game is Unleash Your Creativity, not for speedruns. Exactly. Yeah, this game is for unleashing your creativity, uh, Chief. Absolutely, I agree. Do I still work as an urban planner? That is a question that I have not been answering. Um, but I think, I think it is worth answering. So, I will divulge a little bit more about myself than maybe I have previously. I... When I started the channel, worked in a small community as an urban planner and loved my job. Thought it was great. And then midway through the pandemic, my dream job opened up. And though I was not looking for a new opportunity, I felt that I had to attempt that opportunity if it were presented to me. So I went for it and went from a fairly low profile position where I was well known within the planning community in the area, but not necessarily having the most important job in the area to having a position that was very important. Uh, in fact, if you are in Wisconsin, you may have seen me on your TV, no matter where you live in the state, uh, talking about some of the projects I was working on. That said, I I was one of those casualties of the pandemic where um, I switched jobs and I probably shouldn't have. So I took a job that had a lot more responsibility, had a lot more night meetings, had a lot more of everything, and I didn't really enjoy it. So I am currently doing this for a while. I will probably... Uh, transition from here 
to doing what I was asked to do initially out of grad school, and that is go back to school and get my PhD in urban planning and become a professor. So I think that is my next step. But yeah, that, that was kind of what happened. I um, There are a number of people who saw what my job was. I, needless to say, I for the, for the last couple of years, I've had a very, very prominent job and did a lot of really great things, but it wasn't the right fit for me. <laughs> Books flight to Wisconsin. <laughs> Hello from Madison. So there we go. Was I a famous planner and a famous YouTuber? I wouldn't say I was a famous planner, but I was well known in my area. So with that, I want to say how much I've really appreciated the support because transitioning to doing this has been a big leap and uh, it's been nerve wracking, but I really appreciate that. Uh, Carson, uh, Carsten, thank you so much for the support. Hello from Denmark. Hello from Wisconsin. Uh, so yeah, it's been a, it's been a, it's been kind of a wild time in the last little while. Hello from Sun Prairie. Hello. Hello from Madison. We can high five. <laughs> it's a lot of Madisonians in chat. I love it. Uh, let's see. Thank you so much. Nightmaster 85. I'm sure you get uh, for the super chat. I'm sure you get to ask this tons, but I'm curious if planners love roundabouts and use them often. Why don't we see more of them in the U S it all really depends on the area. So, uh, Wisconsin is very into roundabouts. <laughs> we are actually a place when I was in Colorado, I was shocked to see uh, a webinar that I attended that had planners from Mount Horeb, a planner from Mount Horeb was basically leading the lecture on roundabouts. Mount, Mount Horeb is a, I don't, I don't even know if I consider it a suburb of Madison. It's, it's a small town near Madison. Uh, but you know, definitely having all of those discussions about roundabouts but it it takes it takes a certain amount of comfort in roundabouts to be able to accept them i mean in my hometown for instance um they got their first roundabout in the last couple of years and it made I mean, it made the paper for like a month people lost their minds they thought that everyone was going to die in the roundabout but it was at this intersection where everyone and their brother knows someone who got into a serious accident there and the moment the roundabout went in Rather than having fatalities and a bunch of really serious crashes, you end up with people who are having fender benders, you know, things that are frustrating, but certainly not life threatening or uh, incredibly dangerous. So it takes it takes a while. People need to get a level of comfort. There's a lot of pushback. Uh, so from the perspective of an engineer or a planner that's proposing one, they need to get a certain amount of political support for that. So it's not it's not, it's not, it takes a while. Things take a while. Let's see. Kristen, thank you so much for a 17 months as an associate planner. Recommend a bridge instead of that wide loop. That's the thing. It's, it's vanilla. So it's really difficult to do that without really uh, messing with the terrain. So I, I think I would agree. We, in an ideal world, we have some, some bridging through here. Uh, let's see, 33 Miles Anthony, thank you so much for the super chat. Hey, CPP, has there ever been a Superior State Flags for sale in the store or not? Will there be? Uh, there have not been, and I don't know that I will put them in there because of some similarities to the Cascadia flag. I would not want to impose on any uh, trademarks if there are any of that. So definitely love the flag. Uh, in fact, it's the... It's the logo for a number of my Windows accounts, but I don't know that I'll go there. Uh, Cole, thank you so much. Seven months being an associate plan, uh, associate planner. Appreciate it. Hey, Phil, hope you're doing well. I'm doing great. Things are things are absolutely awesome right now. Uh, oh no, Phil, that curve has the most most grade in the whole highway. Yeah. Oh, that is a great point. <laughs> we probably should modify that flatten it out right here and calm it down greetings from india greetings curvy roads without guardrails makes me shiver me too. <laughs> yeah. makes me too but the node limit the node limit loves all these curvy roads up a mountain without, <laughs> without guardrails there are actually probably some guardrails that i should get rid of <laughs> we could we should live dangerously in the build uh 
Robstar6 Cringe, associate planner for two months. Thank you so much. Reminds me of the weird roundabout uh, roundabout in Cave Run. Can't, uh, where am I doing? I'll have to check that out. Uh, Cave Run, Kentucky. Uh, where's Cave Run near? I actually was near. I actually went to Kentucky recently. Drove through it anyway. I visited some friends. Um, basically, my, my friend group. We all abandoned each other <laughs> about uh, 10 years ago. So we, we get together in unique places. And this time, we decided to go to Nashville. And it was my first time spending any real time there. It was really, really interesting city. Daniel Ellis, thank you so much for the super chat. I'm from the UK and re recently moved to British Columbia. Love the time zone change for your live stream. Looking forward to your new city. Next new city. Thank you so much uh, for the super chat. And yeah, I, British Columbia is somewhere I want to get to. I want to go to uh, Victoria. They have the botanical garden there that I really want to check out. Not sure where you're at in British, British Columbia. Probably there or Vancouver. Either way, I would definitely go. Pros and cons. Hello from your neighboring state, Minnesota. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much for the support. And yes, wonderful state. So this should, in theory, if the connection worked, actually get some traffic. Now, I'm curious. We are going to turn off all this fog because I am curious. Look at that. So this is what I was talking about. For whatever reason, when I made this connection, we got the little arrow. So this should work. I don't know why. Hank Blatt, hi from Madison. We need more roundabouts. Do we? <laughs> uh, Matchbox Muse, you're a few minutes behind. You paused. But uh, you wanted to say that I've been able to devote your time. Yeah. To the I've been very, I feel very fortunate to be able to devote my time to the channel. Um, it's one of the reasons why the video quality has gotten better. Um, it's one of the reasons why I felt more comfortable bringing on an editor to increase the quality uh, of the videos. Um, being able to directly, you know, I, I've had a number of editors and I've, I've been mostly unsuccessful with editors, except for this one. Uh, my current editor is amazing. Absolutely love him. Uh, just a stand up person, super positive, very creative, very prompt. And we talk every single day. And I appreciate that. That is something that was a privilege that I didn't have before. So, the things that have made this possible channel memberships patreon and then a lot of luck so i really i really appreciate that got another ad and apparently the ads i don't know why those are coming uh doc asks is that first note on the outside connection too close yeah it's pretty ugly oh and we have our first people coming in <laughs> i'm afraid to i'm afraid to mess with it now i don't know uh uh, Kaylin says lots of ads today. I have no idea why why uh, we are seeing all the ads today. And then another question. Is Editor Phil a lot? Editor Phil is not a lot. I think I edit my videos differently than everyone else. So I went on a website called YT Jobs. So YouTube Jobs. And I advertised that the editor that I wanted must use Final Cut because that's what I use to edit. And I, my editor has never rendered out a video for me. I basically, I get, I get the rough cut from the editor. And then I usually chop another five to 10 minutes off the video. I'll add some jokes. I will redo a bit of audio if I need to. I will add a few things here and there, whatever I think it fits. So editor Phil is literally me at the end deciding to add a thing here or there to the to the to the episode so it's definitely um different than i mean I'm, I'm not initially when i had an editor i would just provide my files and say all right go and do it but the problem is quality control and i'm a little bit i will admit to two things i'm a perfectionist and i'm a control freak <laughs> and i think that that helps with quality so that is something that for me I just kind of had to do it. I, 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 I don't think, I think I would really struggle to, to let go of hundred percent of the editing ever again. And part of it is I just really enjoy editing too. So yeah. Uh, Raphael asks if I've ever thought about a Latin American inspired city. I have, I have. Greetings from a Brazilian architect. That's awesome. 
Well, thank you so much for the support, Raphael. I have thought about it. Well, we will see. The thing is, and this is something that I, you know, I've, I've kind of preached. I, I, I want to visit before I would ever build anything like that. The only Latin American city I've ever been to is Cabo. <laughs> that was not the best example. So I would want to visit and, and truly understand it. I'm a big believer in building what you know, what you've seen. Um, if there's anything that I would build right now, based on what I've seen, that it would be unusual for me, it would probably be a Greek inspired build. The problem is I just don't think, you know, I mean, you need to be excellent at procedural objects. Um, I believe it's dirty H who has a, an excellent series where they built a Greek inspired uh, build and after seeing that it was like it was kind of like Santa Rainey. it kind of made me go you know what maybe that's just not for me <laughs> uh Derek thank you so much for becoming an associate planner and uh at Karsh Gupta thank you so much for the super chat have I corrected the cargo trailers in in uh in uh, Belmont I have I did turn those around if you actually if you look at the uh at the community tab there's a picture of it I made a couple of other changes too. So yeah, uh, Sam says, so he does the rough cutting. Yeah, he does the rough cutting. And sometimes there's been two videos total that I've basically needed to do nothing, but it's just two videos. So I, I will likely forever stay deeply involved. Uh, let's see. Rye Bread Gaming says Madison needs a roundabout at the intersection of Regent Speedway and Highland. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a really tough area. And part of the part of the problem there is they can strain right away. There's lots of lots of issues there. Uh, what's my opinion on car crashes in City Skylines 2? You really like it? I, I do too. I, I think it's great. Uh, so that's what Suitmaster, Suitmaster asks. Yeah, I think this is one of my issues with City Skylines is it's very utopian. And I'm really looking forward to the added grittiness of city skylines too which it appears that there is a considerable amount so it seems like there's there been there confirmed homelessness um these are these are all things that are, are real issues it also seems to me that city skylines 2 is much more of a management simulator and i'm here for it i don't know how you guys feel about that but i'm super excited about that uh kaylin you've been enjoying the current editing style a lot good so the nice thing about having the editor is rather than spending all of my time focusing on the rough cuts, I get to throw in a, a, a lot of the polish. So the, what I've been focusing on is keeping the flow of the audio as, as, as good as it can be. And I think I'm behind in the chat. So <laughs> Sager, thank you so much for 22 months of being an associate planner. Holy cow. Almost at two years. Uh, I love it when your logo comes in at the beat. Yeah, that's so that's the sort of thing I now I have the opportunity to do small adjustments like that and I do those all the time. So making sure that the beats coming in at just the right time, making sure during some of the landscaping montages that the cuts are occurring to the music. Those are the sorts of things that uh, <laughs> I like to do. Uh, micromanaging party. Woo. <laughs> Kevin. Yes. I'm all about that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Links don't work. Well, his channel is dirty H let's see. I wonder if I can pull up a link to that and hopefully I don't for whatever reason right now, YouTube believes that I am a botter. <laughs> so every time I go, I end up, uh, with this question about botting, they asked me to verify. Here we go. That is Dirty H's. Oh, there's yeah, that's that's Dirty H's YouTube channel. De definitely give Dirty H some love. I'm putting together a Venice build right now, just wild, just a wild uh, thing to even attempt. So absolutely show Dirty H some love. Brian, thank you so much for the super chat. What do you think of the speed limits in the U.S.? Almost everyone speeds in the highway. Going the speed limit would be impeding the flow of traffic. It's a, is it a failure of speed limits, or should there be better enforcement? Oh, that is an excellent question. So it's really tough. So I think the speed limits are there for a reason, but the roads are designed for a design speed. And that design speed is generally higher than the speed limit. 
So this is something that I had many debates about uh, in my previous position that, uh, you know, if we want people to slow down, we have to design the road so that it doesn't feel comfortable to speed. So I think that speed limits are partially uh, the, the, the problem. Uh, if we want people to go the speed limit, the, the road needs to be designed for that speed. Uh, the other the other concern is enforcement. Yeah, in certain areas. I mean, I'm from a place where if you look the wrong way, they will pull you over and give you a speeding ticket. So, but in, but in Madison, for instance, that's not that's not so much the case. And there are many reasons for that. Like in the Beltline, for instance, um, if a cop, let's say you're speeding in the flex lane. So the flex lane, let me pull this up. Let me see if I can pull up an example. One second, I'll pull this on the screen once I get it all zoomed in and figured out. Okay, so here we are. This is Madison. And this right here is the Beltline. It's our highway. It is the main artery that links the west side and the east side of Madison together, connects some of the suburban communities. It's really the lifeblood of the entire community. And when you look at this, we've just recently added what they're calling a flex lane. So the flex lane is a lane, and I'm not sure if it's going to be in the street view or not. Yes, it is. It's this lane right here. And what this does is during the peak period, so think you know, 6.30 in the morning to 9 in the morning, and then after work, those peak periods, they took the shoulder and converted this to be a through lane. Now, you're not supposed to drive in here normally. Normally, it has this X here, and you can't go in here. So uh, what we're seeing in the area is basically that with this lane, that's a, you know, you get, that's an extra lane of capacity during the peak periods. And the average speed of the belt lane, of the belt line has increased. <laughs> but how would you, how would you change this? So I've, I've had conversations with people about this, uh, you know, enforcement about this. And so there are a couple of things. So let's say you see someone in this lane and they're going 80 and you pull them over. Now you potentially create a traffic jam and potentially create all sorts of problems. You could create backups here. You could cause an accident. So there are unmarked vehicles that will from time to time turn their lights on to scare people out of speeding. But reasonably, it's the design speed. If it's designed to allow you to feel comfortable going 80, there will be people who will do it. If the design speed says 55, which this highway right here, this is not a highway that's supposed to allow you to go 75 or 70 miles per hour. It is 55. And I am not 100% sure what that converts to. Let me see. Let me see. 55 miles per hour is 88 kilometers per hour. So that is the speed here. But what people end up going, I think that uh, the last time I checked, the average speed on this road is 75 miles per hour or 120 kilometers per hour. So with with that in mind, that to me, it, maybe it's an enforcement problem, but more than likely, it's a design problem. And that's, I think, the biggest problem that we have, at least here in the U.S., is that roads are often designed for speeds that are different than the posted speed. And as a result that psych psychologically people are thinking, I need to go faster. Now, here's a good question. Are speed cameras not a thing? Sir uh, Korat uh, asks that. Speed cameras are a thing in certain states. So the, the, the US is, it's like 50 individual countries uh, when it comes to its traffic laws. And it might look uniform. This, this highway here would look just like one that you'd see in Minnesota, one that you'd see in California, one that you'd see in Alaska, one that you'd see in Hawaii. But all the rules are different. So you've got to really, you've got to, re thank you, Zucabo. Thank you so much uh, for the, for the conversions. Um, so yeah, it's, it's one of those things where in Wisconsin, speed cameras are actually illegal. There, there's no enabling legislation. And as a result, um, we can't have them. When I was in California, there were speed cameras everywhere. And I even got, uh, not my proudest moment, but I got a, I got a speeding ticket going through one and I get to see my smiling face driving through uh, a speed camera going over the speed limit. 
And uh, I learned my lesson. <laughs> and it caused me to go a lot slower. That said, one of the things that really bothered me about California was watching uh, a speed study. So I, I lived in the San Fernando Valley for a while. And I noticed that they were checking people's speeds on some of the arterials out there. Let me let me let me look at this. Let me pull this up. So I lived. Oh, that's gonna make me nauseous. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. So I lived in two different spots. First, I lived right generally about here. And then I also, when I first moved to the valley, I lived out here. So this, I lived in Encino for a while and I worked out in Woodland Hills. But I saw them going up and down these arterials, these major arterials, you know, three, four lanes at each of these, doing a speed study. And they were adjusting the speed limit to the traffic flow that people, that the, the speed that people were going. Now, from one perspective, that makes total sense. You don't want to have that speed differential, but at the other side, you know, adjust the widths of the road so that people aren't going to speed a whole bunch, but that's very expensive. So yeah, I'm uh, sorry. A little bit of a diatribe there and definitely not doing what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, Jonathan, th thank you so much for the super chat. What do you think about no speed limits on highways in Germany? A lot of people want to see a speed limit for environmental reasons. I think it makes perfect sense to have speed limits. I think that as long as the roads are designed for that speed. I mean, so I guess it goes both ways. So speed differential is always the most dangerous thing. You don't, I mean, if you can prevent there from being a large speed differential, what I mean by that is if you have someone going one speed and someone going twice as fast, that difference in speed, that, that, that difference there is definitely what is the most, the most dangerous thing. If you have everyone going relatively the same speed that's that's much better than the having that large differential so when you don't have a speed limit i think you are encouraging that differential to be higher and i personally don't understand why you would do that so that is that is that's my two cents there uh a student of the people can't wait to see me play city skylines i can't wait to play it it's gonna be amazing I am seeing a little bit of concerning behavior here, though. <laughs> I'm wondering what I need to do to get rid of the stop here. You see that we uh, basically it seems like everyone coming from this highway here is being forced to stop. I don't know that I can actually fix that. Maybe this does it. Put a stop sign there. OK, that did the trick. More or less. Uh, this is your stream, CPP. You can do literally. Uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can. I can do whatever I want here. And that's why we are going to start building this. So I'm going to use dirt roads to plan out some areas. And what we want to do here for this area, I think we're going to basically focus in this area. We're going to separate the roads considerably. We're going to have a, a bit of backing up to this. This will be a local street that basically mirrors the highway so that we can have a fence and some landscaping separation in between the highway. Then we will have a little tiny road basically joining the highway to this and nothing will be connected. So yeah, it'll, it'll be a, an interesting intersection too close. Oh, I think I see what you're saying. So Michael, if I were to separate this and back this up, okay. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to do one. I'm going to, I'm going to follow Michael's lead. We're going to try one thing. So we'll take this back. Let's, let's flatten this out. We'll take it back a little bit further. I think this is, is this what you meant, Michael? <laughs> Cities by Diana says we need at least eight lanes on the, on, on, on the on-ramp. I, I agree. <laughs> if we did that, then maybe we could figure this out. <laughs> Uh, this is Verde Beach. I see that question in there. Uh, Doc, smiley face. Uh, that turn was too tight. That is a, yeah, that is another good point. We will, we will loosen up that turn. The other thing I'm wondering if we take this back this out a little ways and pull this up here, if that helps us out. So I'm giving a little bit more separation in between our 
on an off ramp and then we will sweep this around i'll send this straight for maybe five units and then we'll sweep around so in city skylines too this is where we'd be cutting and filling so <laughs> that would be pretty fun that will be pretty fun i should say soon very very soon so spread this out here uh am i gonna name the roads i actually so this is this if you've been watching verde beach since the beginning you will recall that i began naming all the roads and then eventually i stopped that is one of my bigger regrets in the series because i thought that it really added a lot of character and personality to the builds whatever my first build is in city skylines 2 you better believe that every single road is being named and if i don't rename it i'm going to at least purposely do that so hopefully this modification helps really hoping that this does the trick what do you think michael do you think this is do you think this is good <laughs> mulligan says uh i i can do whatever i want here the topography i'm gonna stop you right here yes hopefully this does the trick all right let's upgrade this back to our four lanes right here probably not entirely necessary and then we'll go with our two lanes here and then fix our ramp fingers crossed fingers crossed yeah, cities by Diana says road names are important I agree they add so much character just like Zuka Boa says I completely agree uh regarding Civ 6 have I ever watched potato McWhiskey I have I have so the things that bother me about Civ 6 <laughs> I don't love there's a there's a number of things so I I miss the workers mechanic I I love micromanaging. Oh, shoot. That was not what I wanted to do. I love micromanaging uh, the workers and adjusting every tile. I actually got that from my wife. So when we were dating, that was one of the things that we bonded over was Civ. We would sit at uh, at the kitchen table. We had both of our rigs on the kitchen table, and we would have like 10 to 12-hour Civ marathons. And she would always try to be very peaceful. I would be a warmongering menace to the world and you know attack basically everyone but her because i wanted to impress her and so the best way to impress your future spouse is not to attack them in civ but she would go through and micromanage every single tile and end up with a city uh, with a with a with a civilization that is much more productive much more uh well educated much more everything than mine so i began doing that as well slowing down and really liking that so you can't really do that in Civ 6, you can build a city, which is neat, but I don't like that you can't do that. I don't, yeah, that uh, uh, Zakov says, or uh, Yakov says it's too animated. I agree. I don't like that. I don't love that um, when you send your scout out and you explore an area, you get to see behind the map, and then you end up with, you know, basically going back to that after, after you, you, uh, our, our pasture scout so I, I i don't love that i bet just i wish that they had a bit more of the civ 5 quality to the game if that makes any sense cities by diana says petition the name the road the chuckles highway you know what i think we can do that i don't know if i have road names on though might have to yeah we could you know what we'll do that uh let's see oh i have random disasters off right now we can we can turn those on and we've got road names on there we go the chuckles highway <laughs> thank you so much for the support uh, diana i always always appreciate it uh no way to get to the new highway from the other side of the highway no there is it's connected all the way across it's not a very good ramp i that 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 part i will admit in fact, we should fix that. Basically, there was no reason to go that way before. Yeah, let's let's improve that. So yeah, do I have mods? So I have I have some visual enhancing mods in this build. Uh, that was kind of the initial. So initially there were none, and then over time, I just the vanilla uh, 
mutts are pretty terrible. <laughs> so they're better now, but at the time they were pretty bad. So I definitely added those at one point in time. And then uh, over time, I've had to add a couple more. So 81 tiles, obviously it was a necessity if I wanted to be able to continue the series. Um, so that's been in the build. And then recently, 81 tiles actually, 81 tiles to save the build from ending when we reach the node limit. So, you know, there are mods in here. I think my goal with Verde Beach has always been that if you are on, if you're playing on the Xbox or PlayStation, you could build whatever I'm building. And I still think that we've accomplished that. You can still, any of the builds, what I'm doing right now, I'm not using mods, I'm not using the network multi-tool. You should, in theory, be able to do what I'm doing right now. This is not the most beautiful ramp, but it will do the trick. Ah, it's not, it's not symmetrical. That's gonna drive me crazy. So we'll need to adjust the other side as well. Probably not totally necessary. Uh, Peace Mugglehausen's in here. Category 10 Tsunami incoming. Yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, let's see. Imagine if another tsunami hit just like the other two streams. Yeah. I'm not going to I'm not gonna channel, channel it, but if it happens, it happens. I'm not going to turn it down. I should connect the other motorway, motorway exits. I missed that one. Missed it. Uh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying your name, but I appreciate the I appreciate the support. Hello from Rochester, New York. What do you think of the uh, the vast majority of the U.S. infrastructure being traffic oriented rather than pedestrian oriented? Additionally, do you think the U.S. needs more transportation options? Yeah, I think that U.S. infrastructure generally is very oriented towards the automobile. It's a product of the time that it was created. Um, and we definitely need to pedestrianize things more than they are right now. All of that said, it's, as far as additional options, I mean, we, that's very place dependent. I mean, it's, it's hard to make, I mean, I, I mentioned this earlier, the U S is just so big and so vast. Some places need it. Uh, some places are getting it, you know, in my community, for instance, we're currently building a bus rapid transit system which is absolutely amazing. And that's 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 the sort of thing that I think is really gonna help us out here. There are some places that don't even have buses or, or that have bus systems that are completely not useful. So, you know, it's really, it's really dependent on the place. <laughs> the nodes, no. Um, but I think almost every place could benefit from more, uh, from more pedestrian infrastructure. There's, there's very few places that couldn't. Uh, I think that what gets lost often is that no matter whether you're a driver, a transit user, a cyclist, you're a pedestrian at the end and the beginning of your trip. So whenever I hear someone say, we don't need more pedestrian infrastructure, that to me is just kind of a nonsense garbage thing to say. It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, so so yeah, that, that to me is, is absolute madness. So... Yeah, we definitely need it. I, I don't think there. I don't think there are any places <laughs> where you could say our pedestrian infrastructure is perfect. We don't need anything and anything else. Even if you're the most pedestrian oriented place. I mean, uh, I mentioned Santorini earlier. I can't think of a place that is more oriented towards pedestrians. Yet there are still roads all over the place and people driving quickly on their scooters. So yeah. Uh, Zukabo is going to dinner. Thank you so much for being here, Zukabo. I really appreciate that. And have a good night. Have a good dinner. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye, Trumpet. <laughs> We've got this strange interchange now that is just kind of this monstrosity with stoplights, apparently. I'm not happy with this interchange, if I'm being completely honest with you. Nor am I happy with this stoplight here. But I think I might give this one some... Yeah, I just hate this. I hate this. We're going to fix it. I'm going to mirror what we're doing over here on this side. That'll that'll do the trick for us. Uh, connect the connect the ramps to the roundabout. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. How long have I been live? Ge geography, John. I've been live now for an hour 
and 20 minutes approximately. So it's been a little while, not that long though. Certainly if you, if you have missed, I mean, a lot of the intro was just chatting and that's really what the point of today was anyway. I, I, for me streams, I'd love to get stuff done, <laughs> but I'm also a realist. I know who I am and that's not necessarily going to be the main point of it. Uh, let's see, put the on off ramps on the roundabout. You think that's a good idea? Huh? Okay. I'll bite. I will, I will bite. So first of all, if we're going to do that, I got to protect the roundabout. So I got to add the cross back in here and I don't know that I'm going to be able to in a, in a good way. Let's see if that does the trick. It still might misshape itself. Um, but I'll run this up the side here on either side and then we'll get connected in. The roundabout connection makes sense to you too, Alex. Yeah, I think it does make sense. I was going to go partial cloverleaf. Uh, am I going to continue tutorial? No, uh, tutorial is done. Tutorial. So uh, the my collaboration with Colossal Order on the airports DLC was mentioned earlier. That collaboration was awesome, except that I made one really big mistake. And that was that I decided it would be a great idea to use Victoria uh, within that collaboration and that was a that basically I corrupted the save and it was messed up basically uh, forever after that so it wasn't uh, the, the way it was messed up was that all of the districts were broken so if you load into it in a completely vanilla state basically there are districts that I can't delete that are in the corners of the map. It's, it's really screwed up. So yeah, I, I I'm not going to come back to that. I came back the last time I went back to it was for uh, plazas and promenades and, and that was really a struggle. So yeah, not going to happen again, which is too bad. I really enjoyed it, but there'll be a new tutorial, maybe tutorial, maybe new tutorial for uh, city skylines too. Ads again. You think I'm overthinking? B Rose says I'm overthinking the interchange. Yeah, maybe I am. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry for the ads. I'm not triggering those. I don't know why they're happening. I don't know how to uh, how to make it stop. It is uh, completely out of my control, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, ads during a live stream seems bad. Yeah, I don't know why they're happening. It is completely, I'm not triggering them. I will talk to, uh, so one of the nice things, one of the things that really I appreciate about YouTube is that when you get to a certain size, they give you a partner manager. And so I, I have a, a, a contact at YouTube that if I have any issues, I can reach out to, to him. So I will, I will touch base and I will ask about that. Maybe there's something I'm doing Maybe it's a test. I don't really know why. I don't stream enough to really know the ins and outs of it. But I will ask him about that if there's a way that I can prevent it. I on the VODs, I will I, I want the ads. I mean that generate revenue. It's helpful. Uh, but I definitely agree during a live stream that it's pretty not cool. So I will uh I will see what I can do. And I apologize for all the ads. Oh, you guys are asking to kill the roundabout altogether. Yeah, there actually isn't really a purpose for the roundabout anymore. Uh, yeah, someone's asking about ad block. Yeah, ad block kind of kind of stinks. Um, as as a creator, I will say, I I totally get it. It's well within your right to do it. Uh, but you know, from the from the actual video itself, definitely stinks. But I, you, you got to do what you got to do. I'm not, uh, Brad, I'm actually not hitting any buttons to, to trigger ads. I don't know why they're coming. Uh, Jordan, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, just getting in from work and happy to catch CPP live. You may have already answered this, but we will see a return of any of your cities and city skylines too. love your videos and streams. Keep up the good work. I have not answered that question and I've been thinking about that and I'm not sure. I've been thinking that we'll probably have some 
tie in to these cities. But I don't know how big of a tie in we should have. I would certainly. I will ask that as a poll in just a second. After I complete this connection, I will ask you guys how you feel about that tie in. Now, the funny thing is in our previous live stream uh, back in May, whenever I asked the poll, <laughs> we never got hit with ads. So I don't want that to happen again. Apparently, that's like just like a thing that I, I, I'm either bad with the streams or they're experimenting with new features. I get, and I say that in air quotes. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, does YouTube Premium lower your ad revenue? No, YouTube Premium actually provides more ad revenue or more revenue per viewer than ads. So I, but I think reasonably, what's happening there is that uh, I just hate this again. <laughs> it's fine. What's what's happening? Uh, hold on, hold on. I I can I can learn to love this. We're gonna take it down and we'll do the exact same thing on this side. Uh, so. I think that when you're looking at the normal ad revenue, there's also the consideration of ad block in there. So that that changes the amount that's being made per per view, if that makes any sense. Start the community. Oh, the community poll? Yeah, I will ask that right now. Let's let's ask the poll. Uh let's see. Should we have a tie into CS1 cities when we move on to CS2? So this basically, the basic question here that I'm asking is, should we start over on our lore or should we continue to build upon that lore? I could see going either way. I am... I'm not 100% sold on the right answer just yet. So I'm going to leave that to you guys. And that's actually, there's a one thing. There's another selfish reason that, uh, that I streamed today is I have a question for you guys that you're going to help me with. And basically the next question is about my microphone. Um, Oh, Emily says YouTube premium went up to $18.99 per month. Jeez, really? I didn't know that. You have YouTube premium and you're seeing ads, Danny? That is ridiculous. Thank you for letting me know, though. I talked about the partner manager. I'll mention that. Because that, that, to me, doesn't sound right. If if I, I do not... Well, so I take that back. I have a personal YouTube premium account for the channel. <laughs> I do not... Um, I have a, I'm a Google Fi subscriber and with Google Fi, they gave me a free year of YouTube premium. So that's how I have it. So when I watch on my TV, for instance, that's how I'm, I'm, I'm watching. Uh, yeah, that is a, so to be fair, to be fair, I do think that YouTube premium offers more than basically any other streaming service because you get YouTube music as well. That said, I don't particularly like YouTube music. Um, I don't know if they have hi-fi offerings now, but it's definitely some of, at least my experience, I'm not sure if you guys have had this, but when I was using YouTube music, I, I, so I used to have Google Play Music. I loved it. Uh, then they moved to Google Music or YouTube Music and the issue was that sometimes the music that you would get would be whatever was in the video because they want to give you the opportunity to turn off the video if you want. The problem with that is sometimes the video versions of songs have noises and sound effects. And if I am listening to a song, the last thing I want is a bunch of sound effects from a video. To me, it's ridiculous. Um... Cities by Diana says, it sounds like an SM7B. Yes, it is an SM7B. That's what I have right now. Um, but I, I hear frequently that this might not be the right microphone for my voice. So I picked up another one and I might get rid of my SM7B 
uh, for an RE20. So I have actually set that up and I want to ask you about that. Sleepless one, road NT1. Is that a, is that a shotgun mic? I don't know what the NT1 is. I should probably know more. Uh, yeah. RB says R, R, uh, RIP Google Play Music. Yeah, Google Play Music was amazing. I it, It's uh, it's one of the reasons why, you know, don't bite the hand that feeds you. But I personally think that it's really getting hard for me to buy Google products because I just don't trust that they're going to exist anymore. And that's, that's kind of where I'm at. It seems to me like any Google product that I have could be canceled at any point in time. An example of this is I bought uh, some Google um, Google Homes. I got them all throughout my house. So if I were to say that the command, it would activate right now. Uh, but I bought some that were not official Google ones. Oh, the ramp is backwards. Ah, thank you, Beast Wigglehausen. Um, so yeah, I, I, I bought some that were not official Google, uh, Google homes, and then they discontinued support for them. So that is to me, the kind of frustrating thing that it's just like, that's not okay. <laughs> there we go. I think, we, I think that's, I think that's fair. So obviously we need to have chuckles in city skylines too. So I'm going to end that poll. We don't need to add, I, we know what's going on. We're going to, we're going to continue the lore. So yes, there will be ties into our existing series, which truthfully, that was my inclination is we've spent all this time, uh, creating characters and building, uh, lore about these different places. I wouldn't want to necessarily completely abandon that, Oh, this is much better. What do you guys think of this? I like this a lot more. Uh, NT1 is not a shotgun, but is very directional condenser mic. Okay. Um, yeah, and so, so initially I had a condenser mic, but my room was not treated very well. And I've been working on treating this. <laughs> it's Wolfie. I love how you spent 25 minutes. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time on this, but you know what? You know what? I like this a ton more <laughs> than I did before. I think it looks a lot better. And now we've got this one road of our neighborhood. So we are an hour and a half in, and we've built one road in our neighborhood. <laughs> Topographic error. Yeah, it's not a it's not a DDI, but it's good enough. This is fine. We got a little bit of backup. We'll have to things will shake out over time. I'm not gonna get overly concerned about this. The bridge is lumpy. Oh no. Why are you guys doing this to me? You're gonna make me <laughs> you're gonna make me redo it. <laughs> I am going to fix this off camera. I'm going to fix it because I'm going to go. I'm going to go absolutely ballistic on this bridge. <laughs> the one off ramp is wild. Which one? This one? It's kind of like this one. I wanted to give enough space so that we didn't see backups, but now we're seeing whatever this is anyway. Crazy merging things happening. I don't know why everyone's doing this. I'm gonna just gonna I'm just gonna, I'm gonna back away. Gonna back away. Gonna yeah. One hour is still faster than most construction crews. Yes, this would take five years in real life. Fix the lanes. Okay. Fix the lanes. I don't what kind of asymmetrics do we have that could fix this? Do we have maybe this? Ah, the upgrade distance is... Why won't you let me change that? You're going to drive me... Okay. Oh, no. I'm going to... You know what? I'm 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 here for continuing to change this interchange, if you guys are. <laughs> there we go. So now maybe with the asymmetric, now we've got the dedicated turn lane. We won't have as much craziness. Okay. Perfect is the enemy of good. I agree. We're gonna step away. We're gonna step away. More roundabouts. We're not going back in time. We're go we're, we're backing away from the roundabouts. We we are, yeah. We're good. Look at that. Look at that. That's perfect. That's what we were looking for. One more lane, bro. Yes. Before you know it, we're gonna have eight lanes going through there. <laughs> All right. We're good. We're good. We are good. We are good. Uh, Jason, thank you for the super chat. I missed some super chats. 
And I want to thank, first of all, Vainglorious Gaming for recommending that I open up stream elements during streams. So I can see that I missed a super chat from Jason Russell. Can you say happy birthday to your wife, Laura? Happy birthday, Laura. Thank you so much for the support, Jason. I hope that you and your wife have a great birthday. Hopefully you're doing something nice. Uh, Jordan Collins. Thank you. you. You're happy to catch this. Okay. No, I, I, I got that one before. Okay. I think we're caught up. I, I apologize, Jason, that I missed the super chat. Really appreciate the support. It means a lot to me. I uh, just make a full clover leaf. No, we're good. We're good. We're going to leave this. We're good. This works. It's flowing well, even though it might look a little crazy. <laughs> Highway lane math. We're good. We don't need to lane math everywhere. <laughs> just finish adding that. Yeah. It needs at least 800 lanes. Maybe. Maybe that's maybe that's our next improvement. <laughs> we just continue to add lanes until I the, the, until my computer just screams and explodes. We did that in a, in a chance uh, in a chat before, so we can do it again. <laughs> All right. So let's before we start the community, I'm going to, to we're gonna do our microphone test, and I want to know which microphone I should go with. So right now. I am currently using the SM7B. This is the microphone that I've used for over a year at this point. I really, really like this microphone, but people have complained that it basically makes my voice sound really boomy. So let's swap over to the other one. This is the RE20. So this is a microphone that I think might take away some of the bass from my voice, which might make my voice sound more pleasant on certain uh, certain speakers. Whether it's a phone speaker, I'm not 100% sure. So I'm going to ask a poll right now. So this, yes, mic change mid... <laughs> I have two microphones in front of me right now. It feels like I'm at a press conference. So let's start a poll and I will legitimately change microphones if you guys like it or I will keep this. Which microphone did you like more? So we're still we're still using the RE20. Oh, I see it prefers the bass. Not much of a difference. RE20 is much better. <laughs> this is gonna I sound really distinct uh distant uh not distant I do have a pop filter on this uh Max likes the softness of the second microphone right now I am on the re20 let's swap back over to the sm7b here's the sm7b not sure which one you like more they're both set to broadcast settings iPhone 13 makes me sound softer on the RE20. All right. Oh my goodness, guys. We can't do 50 50. I was really hoping that we'd have some sort of a. Okay, now we, we the RE20, it's pulling it. Wow. I feel like I made a mistake. Okay. Uh, SM7B, RE20, RE20 right here. I am sitting at about the same distance from the microphone the main difference is that i have a pop filter on the re20 i've got a uh, a windscreen on the uh, sm7b the sm7b sounds heavier to you re20 is much more pleasant to listen to <laughs> you guys are gonna make me flip a coin aren't you <laughs> maybe i should have had a third option that says i can't tell the difference Wow. I I am absolutely astounded. I thought there would be a I thought there'd be a noticeable difference in the vote. Not, not 50 50. Unless you guys are messing with me. Let's see. 500 votes. So it's only a third of you who've actually voted. Rerun the poll. I'm gonna rerun the poll. Or and I'll add the option. They both sound the same. Uh so I'm still in the RE20. Um, which microphone do you like better? And I, I want to know. The third option will be, I'm just messing with you. 
Just kidding. <laughs> not a sh- yeah. No, so, man, these are both excellent microphones. I think that I'd be fine with either one. To me, this is more about you guys. If one really grates at you, because I, I, I keep seeing it in the comments, and I've seen it forever, that it's just too, too bassy, don't like it, it's terrible. Um, but truthfully, I don't think you can go wrong with either of them. Sounds the same. Okay. So again, this is the RE20. This is the RE20. And maybe here's a, here's a test. Hello. Welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are running a test on microphones. Hello. Welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are running a test on microphones. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, one, two. This is the SM7B. Mic check, one, two, one, two. This is the RE20. <laughs> Bass is good. Maybe change headphones. Wow. I can't believe this. Now we're going to do a third all the way across. The, it, looks like, it looks like the SM7B is winning, which is good. That is, that is easy for me. I don't have to change anything. I don't have to, I don't have to change my setup at all. So... I will let this go for a little bit longer, but I, but I will switch back to my normal microphone. Yeah, my voice is just bassy. That is a thing. Uh, yeah, I might just call it. It looks like the RE20 lost. The RE20 is way less harsh. Huh. And it's, it's the thing is, I'm running this through a Rodecaster too. So I'm using the presets for that. So it should be the very best sound that I can get. Or the RE20. <laughs> Sorry that I scared you with the with the hello. Didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna end it. SM7B it is. I will stick with it. <laughs> I've been waiting for that uh, the FedEx driver to show up with my package and the dog to go ballistic. Funny thing is, uh, UPS no problem. FedEx terrible. <laughs> my my dog will just lose its mind. All right. So I thought about whether or not we actually want to have gates into this area. I don't think so. If they just, they really, for me, take away a lot from what, 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 the, what the community will actually look like. So we're going to do something like this. Oh, wait, prefer the, the XQ900. I stopped the count. We're good. We're sticking with the uh, SM7B. Oh, I get some, I get some <laughs> thumbs down. Maybe it's not my, my. It could be whatever speaker you're listening to. Personally, I will admit that I did this test last night, and my preference is the RE20. Uh, would you consider a community raffle for the position of mayor in your first city, uh, city skyline? So we've actually had a couple of conversations in the city hall of the Discord talking about how we're going to handle this. And I want more community involvement. Um so we will do something that involves you guys more. We will, I, I'm not hundred percent sure what that's going to be just yet, but I would, I would consider it. I would consider it. Thank you so much, Cynic for the, for the support. And I would check out that conversation in there, drop your ideas in there. I'm not hundred percent sure necessarily how to handle it just yet, but yeah, I want to, I think that the next level of this is involving you guys as characters as well. And yeah, so much controversy. <laughs> uh, FedEx is Federal Express. It is one of the delivery companies. My main problem with FedEx is just that I feel like every time I have a FedEx package delivered, there's some sort of issue. And it becomes a thing. And I just like, I just want my package delivered. You know, I don't want it to be a thing. <laughs> like today, the guy was super nice. Like it's nothing, nothing against the employees. It's it's more along the lines of like, you know, he said like, I don't know, they didn't load the, the package in the in my truck. So as a result, uh, they're going to come back here and probably, you know, make my dog go crazy. And, you know, Banjo doesn't need that. He doesn't need that. Robin, you're running for, you're, I, Robin, are you actually running for city council? You're going to run for city council in our first city, in city skylines too. 
I'm guessing in City Skylines too. <laughs> uh, Grant, I could be flirting with disaster. I could be. <laughs> I To me, though, I think it would be a lot of fun. Here's the thing. There have been so many times where the right thing to do is absolutely apparent. Yet, there's an elected official who has made a promise to somebody. And to keep their promise, they have to do whatever it is that they're going to do. A good example of this. There was... Uh, let me, let me, I'll, I'll try not to get too specific. Um, so, with any road, there's right-of-way. So, if you have this road right here... The road doesn't actually end. And maybe a better example. I'll upgrade this temporarily. Here we are. This is the road. The sidewalk is part of the road. But there's also generally a bit of terrace on the side as well, which you would see right here. This is, well, this this would be the, the right of way of the road. So if you don't have a sidewalk here, and instead you have just a road with grass on either side, that right-of-way still belongs to the city the city still has the opportunity to come in down the line and say you know what we want to put sidewalks in because it's beneficial for your neighborhood or it's beneficial for your community and uh people won't necessarily see that as the city's land if it is without a sidewalk for a while they'll begin to believe that it's their property and to a certain extent i understand this and it can be frustrating if you've done a whole bunch of landscaping uh, in your area uh, or in that area to have the city come in and rip it out. But it, it has to happen. And especially if you have in your plans that sidewalks are a community value, you need to be able to put them in when the opportunity arises. And usually that opportunity arises when a road is reconstructed. So in some cases, the reconstruction will only happen every 40 years. So if you miss out on that reconstruction opportunity, it might not come up again in your lifetime. <laughs> so it's it's a it's not just a little missed opportunity. It's a huge one. And the reason why that is the, the case is you end up, it's just so much more expensive uh, to, to actually add that sidewalk after the fact. You're changing curb and gutter. It's just really crazy. Uh, so in one instance, someone had voted for a counselor who promised not to put sidewalks in front of their home because they had planted some grape vines that they were planning on using for wine and they had been keeping these for many, many years. And it didn't matter how many times I said, you know, we've we've got to we've got to follow the plans. You lose that battle sometimes. And it can be very, very disappointing. So yeah, that's just one of those things. So Pragmatic people on councils are great. And Robin says, vote for me on city council promises something about children's safety. <laughs> that is a, that's a winning battle right there. A winning argument. <laughs> uh, Matt sounds like Fitchburg a few years ago. Yeah. I mean, I, it wasn't Fitchburg, but yeah, it, yeah, that's, it's very common uh, to have that sort of thing happen in communities. And it, it's very frustrating. So, if I were designing this like a rational person, you'd probably want roadway hierarchy. Our hierarchy is right here. Arterial, collector, all local roads. <laughs> so this is what we are going to have. It's going to be absolute madness. Uh, Nicole, we might reach the year 2300. We might. We might. I don't know that we are, though. That, that seems like it, it might It might be a little out of reach. Uh, James Morgan, yo, Phil, first time stream watcher, long time video watcher. I've always wondered, are you still a city planner? I talked about that earlier a little bit. I am not a full time city planner right now. Right now I'm, I'm doing this and in the future, I may go back to school to get my doctorate. That's kind of where I'm at right now. So definitely feel very fortunate and definitely appreciate all the support it means a lot to me. Uh, who is planting grapes in the front yard so close to the street? Yeah, my thoughts exactly. But here's the thing. They're able to get away with that because they don't have anyone um, anyone walking by their home. <laughs> because uh, who's going to walk their dog on a street that has no sidewalk? And so really, I think that the argument really comes down to that. Is uh, right now no one walks past my house and there's a certain amount of privacy that I get that I will lose 
if there's a sidewalk. And I've heard people make that argument and that carries absolutely no water with me. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's something. So on the note of the question that I was just asked about being a full-time planner, that is something that has been asked of me. Do what I want to sit on a board or commission. And I, I'm taking a break from that right now, but I think that's the world I want to live in. I think I would like to uh, sit on a transportation related border commission in my community or city council down the line. That's the sort of thing that like as a, as a planner, you do not have the luxury of being able to, to, to be a decision maker. You have the opportunity to influence decisions, <laughs> Jordan, <laughs> uh, but you don't have the opportunity to actually make them. So that being a decision maker would be a, an absolutely wild turn of events for me. So that is kind of something that, that I, I, I might want to do. So we'll see. Uh, I'm so cringe. The shortest collector in the world. Yes. Uh, Dr. Phil. Yes. I think I'd like to be Dr. Phil. <laughs> so that, that was something. And I, I think I mentioned this at one other point in time, but um, as I was finishing up my master's degree, the, uh, the head of the program at my college came up to me and said, hey, do you have any interest in joining the doctorate program? We think that you'd be an excellent candidate. Um, and for me, it just felt strange to join a doctorate program without any real world practical planning experience. It felt like the reason I attended the program that I did was because I really appreciated all of the adjuncts that we had people who had actually built things who had actually planned real neighborhoods who had actually been in the trenches that is what i wanted and i didn't want to be the type of person that didn't have that experience so i ended up uh, turning that down but it's it's always stuck in the back of my mind that maybe i need to to return to that at some point in time another ad i don't know I don't, that is frustrating. Uh, DB, thank you so much for the super chat. What City Skylines 2 mechanics announced so far do you think would be the, mo the most potential for mods to shine? I think we could get some fun, unique buildings with different citywide effects. Oh, boy. That is a good question. Um, I think, reasonably, themes. I don't know how much in the way of uh, we're going to be able to mod themes. But I think that themes have the most potential. So I'm really hoping, I mean, but reasonably, I think themes tease up Asian builds. I think it tees up African builds. I think it tees up uh, Latin American builds. I don't love the American theme that there is in City Skylines. It's very, I mean, there are so many different building styles in America. I mean, I lived in Colorado for a while and there are, at least three building styles there so there is kind of the new mexican building style where you had a lot of the you know uh the uh, uh, pueblo style buildings you know that, that are that are really more made of, of earth materials than you have kind of the southwest in, uh, inspired stucco buildings and then you have more of the midwestern brick and and uh uh, brick brick style buildings that you might see elsewhere in the Midwest. And those are just three building styles right there. But they really regionally, there are different building styles. So I'd love to see, I'd love to see that. Uh, European city and face reveal when? <laughs> I, don't, I, you know, I'm not sure about uh, when a European city will happen. One thing that I do know though, is that there will be flavors of European cities in all of the builds now. Yeah, Adobe, Ado Adobo, is that what this is? is it Adobo? Adobe, yeah. The Adobe style buildings, yeah. Uh, face reveal, we talked about that earlier. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the anonymity is nice. I did say I would face reveal at a million subs. Uh, it seems like it's a long ways away, but the channel has been experiencing pretty wild growth recently. So it's hard to say. 
Uh, let's see. Colorado, eh? Used to live in Greeley. Waking up and seeing the Rockies to the West is always a sight. Yeah, I, I absolutely adored Colorado. I it was when I when I moved from LA, I kind of felt like LA was done with me, <laughs> and it wasn't hard to leave. Uh, we're gonna build a school right now, by the way. I'm gonna build uh, some an elementary school and some community schools in this area. Then we'll upgrade some of the roads. Um, I, yeah, I felt like I felt like Colorado was like. It, it treated me really, really well. Um, that said, you know, my wife is really close with her family, and I, she really wanted to be closer to families. But particularly as we as we were, you know, talking about having kids, we just gotten married. It was it was a really challenging thing to be that far away from family. So, and 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 honestly, uh, my grandpa and my grandma both passed after I moved back. So I was able to spend additional years with them. So it's, you know, it definitely, it was tough because from a professional standpoint, my dream was to work for a transit agency. And I, my internship was at RTD, which I loved. And then I, the, the my dream job at the transit agency opened up and I would have had the opportunity to apply for it because it was basically my internship but turned up to a hundred and I was probably the most qualified person for it. I was even told after I moved back, well, maybe you want to consider it. And I did, but it, it just wasn't in the cards. So, um, Colorado was hard for me to leave though. It was a very, very great place. Uh, I'm moving to Denver this weekend from Southwestern Wisconsin. Uh, Abe, what are you, uh, how are you getting out there? So I drove out there with a U-Haul and basically destroyed the Jeep that my wife had. <laughs> so don't do that. I also had no game plan. Uh, you'd think that as a planner, I would plan everything. But I, we didn't have an apartment when we got out to Colorado. So we loaded up a U-Haul and uh, basically said, we will find a place when we get out there. I booked, uh, there was a Best Western off from Colfax. And we... We booked a few nights in there and I said, you know what? We'll figure it out. It's going to be completely fine. We don't, we don't need a place. And then as I get out there, I'm going up to all these people, all these different apartment owners. And I'm saying, you know, can I please get this apartment? I'm going to be going to grad school. I've got money saved up. And uh, everyone that I would go to was basically like, I'm not going to, no, no way. Oh, you are doing the U-Haul trailer. <laughs> you know, you're also moving about when I did. And it was 100 degrees the entire way there. Just take it slow. 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 Especially as you start moving uphill. That's that's what... So it was like basically partway through Nebraska that things started getting crazy for us. So yeah. Uh, I destroyed a Jeep. Yes. And then once we got to Colorado, we didn't drive. I biked everywhere. So the Jeep... So my wife had a Jeep and I had a Hyundai Sonata. And they were both just ticket magnets. Like I just, I just had it basically to get tickets and it was really frustrating. <laughs> so I was just like, I desperately wanted to get rid of both of them. And then we bought a condo while we were out there and we had one parking space uh, and you had to move your cars. Um, it was at least once a week. And yeah, it just kind of, a, kind of a mess. Best Western on Colfax. <laughs> it's not, it's not bad. There's lots of pictures of uh, cowboys. So if you're into that sort of thing, uh, that's that best Western is the place for you. <laughs> um, from Aurora, from Aurora, definitely need some help with RTD. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do feel like Aurora for the size of it, definitely kind of got the shaft with RTD. Oh, Sins Arcade. I'm interested in cul-de-sacs and city skylines, too. I am, too. I don't think we're going to get them. Uh, have I ever been to Europe? Yes, I've been to Europe. I only once. And I went to uh, I went to uh, to Greece with a with a layover in Italy. Um, so that was kind of my experience. I, I flew uh, Alitalia right before it, it went out, and it was the very finest experience I've ever had on a flight they gave me wine and chef prepared meals and as soon as they said they were going out of business i totally understood why <laughs> because it was it was the only oh 
What is this? Object reference. It's the only time on an airline that I've ever felt like they liked me. <laughs> no, I won't say that. It didn't feel like they liked me. It felt like they cared about my perception of them, which I appreciated. It definitely felt like they were indifferent to me. <laughs> uh, let's see. You you haul from or Oregon, Oregon to Wisconsin in the winter? Oh my goodness. So that's that's absolute insanity. <laughs> I you know, I so I I moved from Los Angeles to Wisconsin in I want to say it was like May. And I drove through the Rockies and it was so intense. I got up there and there was a certain part. I had my bike in the back of the car and it was just covered in icicles and I was white knuckling it in the middle of the night cuz I just I just wanted to get home. You know like it was it was um yeah, do not recommend. So I can't even imagine doing that from all the way from Oregon to Wisconsin. That's crazy. Um what is my favorite style of architecture? Craftsman bungalows. Those are, I mean, that's my favorite without a doubt. That my my dream was always to live in one. Never never get the opportunity to. The, the one of the sad things about Madison is that uh, because the city has experienced its growth since the 80s, most of the architecture that would have the craftsman style homes is just ridiculously expensive. So it's just not, wasn't in the cards for me. Let's see. Did I like it in Greece? I love Greece. I could see if, I could see retiring to Greece someday. I could definitely see that. Uh, yeah, it, it's, 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 I like it so much that if I had the opportunity to ever take months somewhere else, I think it would be in Athens. I, Athens is one of the coolest places I've ever been to. Just the, the history that's there, the street culture, the, the fact that people just slow down in the middle of the day and take a beat. Like, that's just not, not what I experience here. It, it, people are just constantly moving. And it's just, it's just, it's exhausting. It's just, sometimes you just need to slow down and, and smell the roses and just take a break. And people don't do that well in America. We do a lot of things really well. We do a lot of things really poorly. And I think that one of the things that I don't love that we do is we just put a lot of pressure on continually being in motion, continually being productive, continually being a hundred percent effective at everything. And we could probably stand to, to, to learn something from um, Europe in that regard. I really think that it's something that we don't excel at. Uh, Doc loves arts, arts and crafts. Yes, that would probably be a close number two. Uh, suggestion, add a bus line for the high school. Yes. Well, actually, actually, I wonder. It, we'll, make it, we'll make it a school bus. Oh, yeah, Starboy. I saw it. Greece is on fire right now. So I, I, I was, it, was, is it roads right now? I've only been to Rhodes accidentally. Um, when I was in Greece, I went to Santorini and there was basically the equivalent of a hurricane. Um, I don't know what they called it. Maybe maybe you can help me, Starboy uh, or, or PG. Oh, I, I'll, have to, I'll have to check. That. Is that, I've, I've heard good things about that, PG. Um, so... So basically, I ended up in a position where the ferry that I was supposed to take to get back to Athens, they said the waters were too choppy and they couldn't they couldn't get me back. And then I went to the hotel that I was at, um, which was this fantastic place, basically hanging on the side of a cliff. You could see the volcanoes uh, and the pool directly from it opened up to this absolutely stunning vista. Um, basically built into the hillside and they said all of our rooms are booked up you gotta leave <laughs> so i'm walking around um santa Rini with all my luggage no way to leave the island being told that there is a deluge coming shortly and i'm gonna be in a real rough spot um but i use the website called great value vacations uh not sponsored <laughs> obviously uh they they were just wild. So there was this lady that was basically assigned to us. And whenever we had a problem, she just like happened to show up and she gave me a call as I'm like starting to panic 
and I can see that my wife's starting to panic and our dream honeymoon that's happening five years after we got married because our, our original honeymoon was actually going to Steamboat Springs and camping. <laughs> so we had no money. This dream honeymoon is turning into our dream or our nightmare. Uh, it was like a monsoon cyclone, something like that. But they basically said it was it was uh, the equivalent of a of a Mediterranean hurricane. Um, this lady calls and she says, uh, hey, I booked you a flight. And I see all these other people that are panicking. And I'm like, what? Like you booked us a flight? And she says, yeah, it's not very direct. You're going to have to you're going to have to go to Rhodes first. Or was it Crete? Crete. We went to Crete. So we ended up flying in the wrong direction to get another flight to fly over this thing. And yeah, not sponsored yet. I would take if they want to fly me back there, <laughs> I'll take that sponsorship. Um, but yeah, they uh, we ended up making it back to Athens. Once we got back there, they gave us uh, a bus ticket and it was the longest, craziest bus ride ever at two in the morning. But the fact that there was a bus at like two in the morning just blew me away because, you know, here buses just shut down. You know, we are with, with our with our bus rapid transit, Madison, we're going to have really good bus service, but it shuts down at two. So to have that. Uh, then they they got me they got me to my hotel. I got to get a couple hours of sleep, and I was on my way. And so many people were not that lucky. So many people got trapped. But uh, yeah, it was it was it definitely saved our trip. <laughs> Felt very fortunate. Uh, isn't great value Walmart? <laughs> it is, but not this great value vacations. Let me see. So first of all, the whole trip was like two grand, all everything included. So this is the site. This is what we did. Um, and it was just super cheap. Um, and it was just, so it included the flights to get there. I mean, when it says you know, 1500, you're like, what? That's crazy. That doesn't make any sense. But we took a leap of faith. We we did it and it was wonderful. We had a we had a, we had a person to call. Uh, we had our flights. We had all of our hotels. The only thing that wasn't included was our food. So in comparison, we went to Cabo. We did an all-inclusive vacation. Uh, I had a friend who said, come with us. It'll be amazing. It was it was a good trip. But the thing that was so weird about that, you know, I if I go to a place and I visit, I want to experience the culture the way that a local does, or at least the uh, an approximation of it. And... I, when I went to Mexico, that is not the experience. I feel like you you go to Mexico and you see this really sanitized version of Mexico. There were literal walls around this, this resort that we were at to hide Mexico from us. And it felt like I was in California. And to me, that was like, ah, oh, man, that's not what I wanted. So I actually ended up leaving on that trip. I ended up leaving the resort, even though we had all of our food and everything paid because I just wanted to experience Mexico. And I walked up the beach. I got my first sunburn in my life because I'm dark enough that I don't normally get sunburns. Um, Oh, good flight degrees for 15 euros. That's wild. Ah, maybe I gotta, I gotta go to Europe and go to Germany. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Medicaid black Knoll says it's called a Medicaid meteorologist. <laughs> I just did an ad and I didn't get paid for it, which makes me basically the worst YouTuber on the planet. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So it looks like uh, Grind Out gets it. Yeah, like you're, you're Puerto Vallarta, all of those places, like they just, it's just not, it's not authentic. So I, I walked the beach. I walked for, so there's this, this, this arch. Let me see. Let's, let's come back. We'll go, we'll go back to Google Earth because I'm just meandering all over the place today. I apologize that we're not actually getting anything done. I'm just kind of talking a whole bunch, but I'm having a good time. Hopefully you are too. Um, so let's look at where I stayed. So I stayed. Oh, that is right. I think it was right here, somewhere along this area. Oh, to, oh actually, it's probably right. Is this the, where's the Ryu?
All right. Well, somewhere around here. I basically stayed. I think I want to say it was one of these. Um, in fact, I'm going to say it was right here because we had a room that was like right on the ocean. Absolutely awesome. And there were all these pools and things, bars right there at the pool. It was awesome. So I basically ended up walking from the resort all the way down, all the way down here, all the way down, <laughs> like a crazy person until I got into the city. And we ended up walking around here and having breakfast near this marina. And that was the first time that I had a meal that felt authentic to anything that was so, um, I don't know. Just it was the, it was the best meal I had. It was it was the only one. I, you're at the you're at the hotel Ryu, and they have sushi and they have you know Indian food, but it's all a little bit off. It's all a little bit weird, <laughs> you know. And, and it it's all buff, a whole bunch of it's buffet style, and uh, so I went there over the Fourth of July, and they did a I mean they had a fireworks show and they lit up an American flag, and then at the very end of that. They go, they play, play the, uh, you know, the Warner Brothers, that's all folks thing. They did that at the very end. It was, it was super weird. <laughs> it was, it was one of the more bizarre experiences of my life. <laughs> so anyway, I want, if I ever go back to Mexico, I think I want to go back to, I want to go, I want to go to like Mexico city and just like experience the city, not experience a resort. If I were to go to Cabo rather than staying in a place where they wall off me off from the rest of the world. And I wonder if I can actually show this to you. Maybe yeah, you can see it right here. So let's. Okay. Check this out. This I stayed inside of this wall. So we drive up, we drive up and you're going through what looks like a place that has absolutely no infrastructure. So they didn't burn the flag. They like lit up. <laughs> it's hard to explain. So I was like, it was like a flag with a bunch of fireworks inside of it. They did it right in the middle of the day in front of the pools while we were all drinking in the pools, having a good time. Yeah, it was bizarre. <laughs> but yeah, so this is what we saw. So I didn't want to see this. This to me was, we're going to keep you out of Mexico and keep you in your resort. And we'll pretend that this is all you get to see. So this to me felt very sanitized. Um. Yeah. So, Angel, you're from Mexico. How do you feel about this? Like to me, it just felt wrong. To me, this didn't seem right at all. Yeah, Jurassic Park gates. Yeah. So this is so this is the hotel that I stayed at, Ryu. And then look at you even see there's landscaping. Everything turns like super nice as you walk up to this. So, the long story short is this trip to stay inside of the gates of the Ryu was more expensive and less time than going to Europe. And it was much less enjoyable. Although I enjoyed the company of the people I was with, uh, staying in a place like this just isn't it. Not, not for me. This to me is very, very strange. So very strange. Planner Doc, thank you so much for the support. Walking into a meeting, but wanted to show my support and thanks for all you do. Also, did you visit Pasadena while you lived out here to see all the craftsmen homes? I did. Uh, my wife also went to uh, Oax Oaxco and said she had a blast. Oh, neat, neat. Uh, yeah, I actually worked at the Glendale Galleria for the iPhone opening. So I got to meet Steve Jobs, kind of. <laughs> uh, yeah, the workers are on the outside um, and they're not, they don't get the, the, the treatment of the the vehicles and it felt really dehumanizing all of this did so i didn't really like that yeah planner duck you are amazing i appreciate that if you ever wonder why on the videos there's this special thanks to planner duck planner duck has been one of the biggest supporters of the channel i really appreciate you appreciate all that you do appreciate all that you do for your community and appreciate all that you do for the channel it means a ton to me thank you so much but yeah hotel ryu <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely not a good sponsorship for them. <laughs> good, good advertisement for them. It's a beautiful hotel. I will, I will, I will. If, if you want that experience, there's seven restaurants in there, a ton of pools. You, you, you feel like you're special while you're in there. There's even an ATM that spits out dollar bills, <laughs> but it just wasn't. Planner Duck, five member gifted memberships. 
Thank you so much. Again, I told everyone else that re re has received those earlier um, that there are currently two videos in the Vimeo. There is a pinned comment from the start of the month. I do this at the start of every month. I will leave a pinned comment with a folder to secret videos that have no ads. So all the ads that people have said today, no ads on Vimeo. Uh, you're able to just check them out. I post them there. I'm trying to post them there earlier and earlier and earlier. So that's my goal. Um, and I will post all the rough cuts, which are generally not very rough. So uh, let's see. Yeah, I met Steve Jobs. We, we couldn't look him in the eyes. We were told that if we would look Steve Jobs in the in the eyes, we'd be we'd be fired on the spot. So I looked at my my shoes when he walked in the room. So yeah, he he wasn't. I I didn't personally enjoy my experience with him, but that area. Um, so Pasadena. It's funny that you mentioned that. I wanted an internship in Pasadena, but that was like the most sought after internship. Everyone wanted to work in Pasadena because it's just so amazing. So yeah. Let's see. My wife and I went to Ryu Palace back in 2018. It was nice, but you're right. Very sanitized. Uh, is, is Which one is this? I can't remember. Is uh, is this Ryu Palace? We might have been there about the same time. Oh, no. This is... Uh, this is oh, yeah. This is the palace. So, yeah. We might have been there around the same time. I, uh, I went... Well, no. I went 2019 because I did a whole bunch of... I did travel like right before the pandemic. I was like... Now I'm going to be a world traveler. I'm going to get out there and see things. And uh, then the world shut down. So I was really happy that I was able to check that stuff out before then. Um, JL, you're about to go to a bike advocacy meeting for the second time and try to make my city of 75,000 bikeable and safe. Good. Good. I get out there and do those things. Your community, your community is, is the easiest place for you to change things in. So many people get fixated on what the federal government is doing and what is happening at the national level in no matter what country you're in. But here's the thing. The government that impacts you the most is your local government. And it's also the one that happens to be the easiest to fix. So do it. Get out there and do it. It's awesome. Um, Tilly Cat, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a, a twice ex-Apple alum. I worked at the Apple store in the Glendale Galleria. Apple store number one. Um, and I also was an Apple campus rep and my job basically, and these here's going to date me. Um, it was the iPad or the iP iPad, the iPod nano, those little tiny ones with the spin wheel. I had little magnets of those. My job as a campus rep was to basically get people to know about Apple products. So I would stick those stickers, those magnets all over campus. And uh, <laughs> the kinds of things that like as a planner would drive me absolutely crazy. Uh, that's what I would do. Yeah, and my streams are never what I want to do. <laughs> I get sidetracked, but I have a lot of fun. And Doc, all politics are local. Absolutely. So if you are not taking part, you're missing out because yeah, that's you have the opportunity to actually make some big changes. Uh, because this is a very suburban environment, we are going to have parking all over the place truthfully if i were keeping this real in this suburban environment i bet you we do something like this and we'll add even more parking behind this school um and the reason why we're going to do that is all the people who have their homes around here are eventually not going to want any kids parking on their streets because they could block their mailboxes not that I not that I know that from experience. <laughs> there we go. There's there's some more uh some more parking. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> uh oh, you worked at the Fer Fer has worked at the Century City Apple store. Very nice. So I, the funny thing is, I ended up going from the Apple store to working at a talent agency as as a as a personal assistant to a talent agent so i'm going through all these weird things and uh someone goes into the apple store and she talks to me and she recognizes my accent and we just hit it off she's like you know she ends up being from wapaka which is a small city um in central wisconsin so we have 
a similar accent. I'd say that my accent's probably more northern Wisconsin than than anything. Um, and I end up uh, end up hitting it off with her, and she says, you know, how how do you like working here? And I I basically said, I like it, but my hours are 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 strange. Sometimes I would get forty hours, and the next day or the next week I would get four hours. And I don't know how you are able to afford at that point. My rent was, um, it was twelve hundred bucks a month, which I think now people would go, I'd kill for that. But at the time, like that was just wild for me. Like I, I coming from Wisconsin, my room in Wisconsin at my at my place I went to college was two hundred dollars a month. So, um, twelve hundred was wild. And then to have the Apple Store pulling that kind of stuff on me, where they didn't want me to get benefits, so they would end up not, you know, um, uh, basically not giving me more than four hours that following week, so I wouldn't average into being a forty-hour-a-week employee. Um, yeah, it was really, really frustrating. Yeah, and stay-at-home gamer. I do have an accent. Uh, you can hear it when I say words like tag and bag. I think. People, when I lived in LA, thought I was from Canada, <laughs> but it is where I live right now uh, is basically if you were to watch the news, it's the accent that uh, basically news anchors try to emulate, or at least they used to. I don't know that they still do. I, apparently it's really neutral. Maybe it's homey. <laughs> you have cousins in Wapaka. You visit the chain of lakes there every summer. Oh, it's it's a great place to hang out. I uh, I visited a I, I, we rented a cabin there a number of years ago. Uh, am I interested in European cities? I am very interested. I'm very interested in European cities. Um, I live in a neighborhood of Los Angeles called San Pedro. Yes, I know where that is. Kind of by Long Beach. I've never actually spent any time there. I I spent a lot of time in Redondo Beach. Um, I had some friends who lived in that area. Add again. I. It is amazing that it is so uniform that everyone's getting there all at the same time. Sin, you don't hear any Canadian in my voice. That's, that's, I, I'm not going to say it's good. It's a thing. <laughs> at least I sound the way I am, I guess. You went an hour without ads, now they're every 30 minutes. I don't know why some people are getting them and some people aren't. I I do wonder. So I know that YouTube runs experiments constantly. And I am very curious as to whether some of you are part of some experiments. Uh, do I ever go to the EAA uh, uh, air show in, in Oshkosh? I do not. It's I, I My brother-in-law's family goes, though, and they like it. Verita Beach is at 102. Yeah, it feels like it's hitting 102 in my office. I'm actually going to open the door. <laughs> Whew. Uh, am I not? Am I familiar with the channel Not Just Bikes? Uh, I am. In fact, uh, if you if you go in the Discord, they 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 were in the server at one point in time. Not sure if they still are. Um, the strong dislike of car centric planning. I think it's fair. Um, the one thing that you know i think that we have to be careful about just to generally is feeling like we know all of the answers right now so that's my my one thing that i'm all the reason why i have you might wonder why i never continued or why i haven't put more videos out on city planner explains that's a question i get quite quite often so maybe i'll talk about that in a second um i've just been really reluctant to do two things the first is to kind of go after people's homes. I think that communities are reflections of the people who live there. And I think if you get too negative about that, you, you border on attacking people. So I, I'm nervous of, of myself venturing there because I do have a lot of very strong opinions about places and I don't want to get to that spot. The other, play, the other thing is I do wonder what I think, what parts of... of contemporary planning I think are good that 20 years down the line or even 10 years down the line are going to be viewed as, as incredibly harmful things so I don't know I sound pretty similar 
uh to the city beautiful host yeah i think i think it's a uh, i think it's the measure like as a as a as as a professional planner especially uh so dave amos has that channel i love that channel check it out um he was a consultant for a while and I was a consultant for a while as well. And there were places that I went that I wouldn't personally want to live in, but I could understand why people would want to live there. So it's one of those things that I guess led me to being really reluctant to, to talk negatively about places. And to that's, that's been my, my thing with that channel. Uh, let's see. Bef Will Trippy be in City Skylines too? I don't know. <laughs> now that now that Twitter is now X, is Trippy going to be in City Skylines too? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um. And yeah, Amp. I use Amp. That's what I'm using for this because we get the overlays. I looked for a long time. Let's see. Tilly Cat says, I think you should speak out. It's a natural next step for someone like you. So it's funny. These these developer diary rundown videos that I've been putting together, they have been my first introduction in a while to heavily scripted videos. Because my, my normal process. So let's say I'm making a video for this channel. What I like to do is basically put together a general outline for a video. Um, I'll bullet it out. I know that I want to do these couple of things and then I will practice it lightly to make sure that it's possible to achieve in the time frame of a video. And then after that, I will, I will record it. I'm thinking of things beforehand that I want to say. I script out the first, you know, the, the hook to the video, the first minute or two. But after that, I kind of just, I kind of just riff and I've never been the kind of person who's able to go in after a video. I could never do a time-lapse video where things are speeding up and, and I'm coming in with commentary after the fact. I just don't think I know how to do that. Um, but the fully scripted videos, I'm getting better at them. And that's one of the things that I've really appreciated about the developer diary videos. That was the other problem with City Planner Explains is I just not, am not well-versed at writing a script and then coming up with things afterwards to fit to that script, whether that's visuals or, you know, just generally laying out a script. So I'm learning a lot there and I think it will lead me to be more comfortable with that. But again, that my, my concern has, has been, um, you know, that I could potentially say things that would be um, perceived as harmful or hurtful to people. I don't want to do that. So, and I, I, I see that with other, with other content that there are things that, you know, you could be perceived as, as good, um, not from city beautiful. I think that generally, uh, city beautiful is pretty good about that. And I think, I think that not just bikes is pretty good about that too. You could tell it's satire, but there are some other channels out there that I, I think can borderline on, on hurtful content. And I don't, I just, I don't want to be a part of that. I want, if I'm going to contribute to urban planning educational content i want to make sure that whatever i'm saying is thoughtful and well thought out and i also think that if i do that i need to take time away from this channel i don't think it's an additive thing for me it's it's gonna be a subtraction uh vainglorious i know how many words per minute i speak so i know how long my yeah you're lucky i i i do not this many years in you'd think i would know exactly how long uh, one of my scripts should be or what, how long one of my videos should be. I have no idea. Um, the most recent Verde beach video where we put together the casinos, I had no idea that was going to be such a short video. <laughs> like, like I got it back from uh, my editor and I basically, I was, I was kind of shocked. Like, really, this is going to be that short. I mean, it's great. I think that some people prefer it. And I saw that in the comments. Um, but I was also just like kind of surprised. They didn't realize. Uh, let's see. Have I ever been to Germany? I have not, but it's one of the places I want to go. I actually just found out. So I've gone on a bit of a genealogy kick recently. Um, and I took an ancestry test 
It's one of the things about being African American is you don't really know where your ancestry is from. You, you have guesses, but you don't really know. And the other thing is, you know, I'm, I'm half I'm half white as well, and I've heard rumors about you know, please faster. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, I I've heard I've heard rumors about where I'm from, but I don't really know. So I ended up taking a 23andMe test and finding out that I am basically a quarter Nigerian. And then uh, everything else was kind of a mixture of different uh, West African um, genealogy, which I thought was really fascinating. I had no idea before that. So, and then the, then the rest, yeah, I was a quarter German or French, which I know is German, uh, and then a quarter Polish, which I also had suspicions about, but I wasn't hundred percent sure. So it was really cool to see that. Um, the community's coming together. Yeah. I'm, I'm just kind of doing things. <laughs> so I kept the lots really big because we're going to add, like, we're going to zone so little in here. Um, we're going to basically do something like this house gets a whole bunch of amenities around it. This house gets a whole bunch of amenities. So does this one. Maybe we keep this completely empty. We do one here and one here. And these are going to be massive. So we'll add tennis courts and a bunch of other stuff around it. Yeah, this place is not great. <laughs> um, let me see. That's a wild genetic makeup. Not in Wisconsin. So in Wisconsin, I mean... So many people here are German. I mean, that's that's the history of the state. So that part wasn't surprising to me. I also found out where in Germany my uh, my German side is from. They're from uh, Brandenburg. So that kind of became a place that I is kind of on my bucket list of places to see now. Uh, Vainglorious, we are on we are in Verde Beach, and we are making a gated community, and that's why. Our zoning is so sparse. This is this is the 82 miles to, uh, mod is or 81 tiles mod is going to be really helpful here, because we can separate these super far, and it not be a problem. Maybe maybe we'll have the uh, the dense housing <laughs> along here. Yeah, that this will be our this will be where we have more housing. It'll be it'll be a little bit tighter. I feel like having homes closer together would fix power problems. Yeah. Uh, Tony is 75% English, 25% Welsh. I don't think it's not plain. It's just different. You know, I mean, we all have different backgrounds. I, to me, it was just, it was very nice to, to finally get some clarity as to particularly my, my, my black side. So, uh, am I close to the node limit? I, how, how close I'm not, you know, I'm, I believe I took that mod out simply because it was conflicting, but I'm probably 3000 away. Got a little bit of, a little bit of space. Uh, have I ever been to Poland? I have not. That's also on my list though. I'm very, I have no idea where my, where my Polish ancestry is from. Um, but I definitely want to check it out. I mean, one of the things that one of the things that I knew about that is, so my grandma would make, um, she called them cottage cheese patties. They're basically pierogies filled with cottage cheese. And that is, that was like, our, that's like our family recipe. So it's like the, the one thing that I also, um, the special thing that I make for, for my kids. Jonas says it's a bleak part of Germany. <laughs> Maybe that's why they moved to Wisconsin. I mean, so my family moved from Brandenburg, Germany to Shawano, Wisconsin. I don't know why that would happen, but that that is what happened. <laughs> and if you know anything about Shawano, okay, if you don't know anything about Shawano, look it up on YouTube because they're, uh, it's an interesting place. I'll just say that. <laughs> I've never been to Israel. I've never been to Vancouver. I've never been to Poland. Um, I haven't traveled enough. I mean, I think that if you're an American, that's that's 
something that most of us could say. So, yeah, I think that that's something that I would like to, to change. I know for my kids, I'm really hoping that I can get them out and traveling more than I got to as a kid. Um, I mean, our, our, our biggest trip was to the Dells. <laughs> Cottage cheese is unbearable. Oh, that is, that is, that is not right. Cottage cheese is one of the best foods in the world. My wife actually asked me the other day, like if I, if I, if I had one food, what would it be? And I, I told her it was cottage cheese, which she also thought was wrong. <laughs> so I was thinking of adding a road back here and trying to have, um, trying to basically make this feel like a private tennis court by having that here, but it's just not going to work. So, or it would, but it would be very complicated. And I've already, I'm already slow walking this whole thing. Uh, what happens in Shano doesn't stay in Shano. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I found out that that's where my, my, uh, is my great, great grandpa moved from Germany. I was, I was very surprised to, to hear that. <laughs> it seemed like, it seemed like a very strange place to go. How does cheese? How can you not like it? Sebastian. How does cheese is wonderful. I, when I, so when I was in, when I was in college undergrad, you know, one of the things that I loved, so I went to uh, U University of Wisconsin Stevens Point for undergrad, and I loved that we had this place called Debo, and you could get whatever you wanted. So I would go there and just load up on cottage cheese, and I would take it in a, in a big bowl, and I'd take it back, pull on cottage cheese, fine. I will, I will engage with that. <laughs> uh, cottage cheese. Good or gross? There's no in between. I want to know. I want to know. I think it's great. Uh, Brandenburg is like 90% forest. That doesn't sound so bad. Wait, is this poll going to be just like the SM7B versus the RE20? <laughs> Cottage cheese in Wisconsin makes sense. It does. It does make sense. So I think that most people, when they think of pierogies, think of like potato and cheese or something like that. But that's not, that's not the way that we did it. So I wanted to play something here, but we're too close to the road and I want to have a fence along there because I'd like to burn up all the nodes in this little area. I like this. 56% think cottage cheese is good. Now, here's the thing. I can agree that cottage cheese is gross, but only when people put a bunch of stuff in it. So there are people who like to throw things like grapes or pineapples or chives, all these different things in cottage cheese. None of that stuff belongs in there. It should just be by itself. <laughs> uh, what is my favorite type of cheese, excluding cottage cheese? Probably a sharp cheddar. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty, it's pretty simple. Otherwise, a Munster. Uh, let's see. Franimus is going to Culver's this weekend. Good. Good. I went to, I went to Culver's two nights ago. And I did not get cheese curds. I got I got uh onion rings. Still very good. Uh berry pierogies. What? I gotta know more about these, Ty. Uh let's see. Nicole only likes mozzarella. Really? Mozzarella's fine. I don't I didn't like it's 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 fine. So what other sorts? I will. Oh my goodness! I just looked at the poll. Fifty-one to forty-nine. We got such an even-keeled group in here today. Just uh, cottage cheese with a dash of pepper and paprika. I've never tried paprika. I'll have to do that. So I like to. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be super weird. And I like putting a little bit of pepper, and I also like putting a little bit of salt. So putting salt on cheese is probably crazy, but it's fine. Uh, the one thing we are missing here is a dog park. So maybe in the center of this, we'll put a dog park right next to this path. And I wonder, this is probably not big enough. Yep, I made it impossible to place any of these large parks, but we'll put something like here. There we go. And we obviously need to have some of our new ponds as well. You couldn't design a new neighborhood like this without it. Uh, Bree. Bree's good. 
like Bree. Uh, when you visit a city outside of the U.S., does your views as a U.S. A city planner come in? Um, Jonathan, no. When I when I visit a city outside of the U.S., I mostly think about elements of those places that I wish we had here, and that things that we should learn from. And uh, so that's kind of my experience, because I think that it's so easy to often just shut down and say uh you can't do x y and z and it's like that no matter where you are oh my goodness i'm ending the poll but i want to say that i'm very disappointed in all of you <laughs> i think you're messing with me now we can't have two polls which are basically 50 50. <laughs> uh, but yeah so that my experience is when i go to a different place and it doesn't even have to be out of the country I go to a different city somewhere else in the country and I'm constantly looking at the things that we could learn from and getting those ideas and sharing them with other planners and, and things of that nature. Uh, yes, the elementary school does need a big playground. That's one of the reasons we went over here. So we will add that. Uh, do I like cream cheese for bagels? I like cream cheese, yes. I generally liked whipped cream cheese. I don't know if that's blasphemous or not, but I that's... My preferred cream cheese is the whipped cream cheese. What do you got? What do you got? Which NFL team do I dislike more, the Vikings or the Bears? Oh boy. Um, probably the Bears because they've had some measure of success at some point in time. <laughs> I I mean. Oh, and you say I'm not respecting the topography. I'm actually using assets that are fine to have in these sorts of places you can place these because they don't need to be fully level so to me this is still respecting the topography respecting the topography just fine uh let's see can't stand ricotta i think ricotta is great <laughs> who doesn't like ricotta i don't understand uh what the blazes is whipped cream cheese so it's basically cream cheese that they machine add a bunch of air to. So it's probably really dumb that I like that one the most, considering that you're actually getting less cream cheese when you buy whipped cream cheese. But I like whipped butter. I like whipped cream cheese. <laughs> yeah, poor Vikings fans. I, you know, no. <laughs> You know, the funny thing is my favorite bar in Denver, one of my favorite bars to go to is a Vikings bar. Yeah, apparently I just like torture. It was like City Bar or something like that. That and the Cherry Cricket. <laughs> there are two high schools. Did I do that? Oh, did I really? That I did not mean to do that. Yeah. Nothing to see here. Nobody saw that. I definitely put a community school there. Lions over 10 wins? I don't know. The Lions are terrible. The Lions are another team I'd feel bad for. So my cousin is from Chicago. So we've gone to games together only to watch the Bears get beat at Soldier Field. So I probably would say that I feel, I feel worse for the Bears. Uh, Amish butter in the Midwest is the best butter. Yeah. Most Amish things are pretty, pretty amazing. My, my kitchen table is an Amish kitchen table. And you just, the craftsmanship is just outstanding. Uh, let's see. Let's add a couple of ponds. Why am I just not? Let's see. Swankies in Denver is where it's at. I, you know, I actually never went there. Yeah, Cherry Cricket, that was my spot. I went with my buddy um, as often as, as I could get away with. <laughs> but I, I lived not too far from there. I lived in Congress Park for a while, and I bought a condo in Cheeseman Park. So those are my places. Uh, let's see. So I'm really loving this city of yours, and I'm really jealous. Somehow I managed to turn it into all grids, and I'm not doing this. How do you not do grids you know it's funny i had a i had a patron ask that recently as well so i want to cover that in a video soon uh, basically find inspiration 
for not gritting elsewhere. I'm going to just sever that. It'll be fine. Uh, so for me, when I was coming up with this, first of all, I wasn't overthinking it. We were all talking and just hanging out. Uh, Sally, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you for being here. Um, so don't overthink it. I followed contour lines. It's one of the reasons I have the contours on right now is I'm just following them. I mean, that's the kind of thing that happens in real life, especially in suburban places is, you know, these roads aren't random, you know, like there, there are, I mean, in some cases they are, but oftentimes they are the way they are for some inspiration and you might not like it, but this is why they happen. So that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, the big thing is you got to get yourself out of the efficiency mindset. I think that's the hardest thing to break in city skylines is the game kind of because of these grids that we see here, it goads you into trying to build the most efficient, completely square grid possible where you're just coming up here and you're just, I'm going to go, I'm going to go 10 by 10 by 10 by 10. And that's going to be everywhere or better yet, 40 by 10. We'll do it New York city style. So you just got to prevent yourself from doing that. I'm really interested in seeing. Uh, so the, my one concern about City Skylines 2 is that I think it's going to be very tempting to use that new grid making tool and just everyone's going to have the exact same grid in their city. <laughs> because why wouldn't they? <laughs> you know, it's going to be so easy. Uh, what graphics card do I use? I actually, and maybe it's in the description of this, there's a link to my my whole setup. My graphics card is overkill. I have a 4090. I basically, when I built my computer, um, a little story about that. I, when I first started the channel, I was using a Dell XPS laptop, a two and a two and one, and it had no graphics card. <laughs> so when I wanted to take the channel to the next level. I decided to buy a Lenovo graphics dock. Let's let's me see. Uh, so I bought one of these things. And it's a Thunderbolt. I think it's a 1050. Let me see. I want to say there's a 1050 in here. So not, not a very powerful graphics card, but it made the game just buttery smooth compared to what I was used to. And so I'm 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 sitting here on my on my little XPS laptop <laughs> trying to trying to run the game, trying to record using this thing and my little 13-inch laptop. Uh so I built a computer and I built what I could afford at the time and it I quickly topped it out and I started having issues again there were the uh there was the stream where I ended up basically lighting my computer on fire there was the stream where um you know I I had terrible frame rates and I was constantly having problems during recordings too where I would record a full video and then come to find out that things overheated and I dropped a whole bunch of frames so I, and then I'd redo the video because I would never accept that um as is like a finished product so um yeah, it was, it was uh, definitely, it was, if I was going to build a new computer, it was going to be the very best computer that I could build. The one that I wouldn't have to upgrade anything. So I ended up basically just buying it one piece at a time. And yeah, you can't tell much of a difference. Yeah, yeah basically deciding to um, get the best I could get. So that's how I ended up with this. Uh, can I make a reference link, a, a reference to my computer or to discord? So discord.gg sat slash city planner plays is how you get to the discord. Lots of awesome people in there. I don't get in there as much as I should. I want to get in there more. Uh, it's probably going to be continue to be a challenge while I make the scripted Monday videos, the three videos a week. But yeah. Uh, how about gatehouse? I wonder. Maybe. Well, let me. So, Patrick, what are you thinking for a gate at the at the entrance to this community? I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to do. So, I'm basically concerned that it's going to be really tempting to throw in um, 
one of the toll booths, but that's not at all what I want to do here. So I could use something from the railroads of Japan that could throw like an outhouse there. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Jonathan, you asked, can I make a video on the mods and settings I use? So I did that actually. It didn't go very well. <laughs> so basically I put together a mod video and it started out as my top 10 mods and it turned into my top 15 mods. And then eventually it morphed into my top 30 mods and the video was almost two hours long. And I ended up dividing it in half. The first half did okay. And it didn't have most of the mods that people expected. So it had a lot of dislikes. And then I released the second half a couple days later. It had all the mods that people would expect to see, but I rated them lower. And I rated them because I don't think that everyone should have TMPE. I don't think that everyone should necessarily have um, node controller. I don't think that everyone should have intersection marking tool. Uh, I think that if you want to get into that level of detail, you should do it, but not everyone should do it. But everyone, if you're going to get into modding, everyone should have move it. Like that's just in my mind, not even a question. Like everyone should have move it. I would, I, I'm still waiting to see in city skylines too, if there's going to be any sort, I mean, I, I don't expect it, but is there any sort of move it like functionality? So that's why I had those mods rated first. I also worked with uh, mod creators to put together that. So, yeah. Let's see, one of those roofed pizza thingies. I don't know what you're talking about. Strawberry bubbles? Uh, sorry, I don't know all those assets in the game, but yeah, tolls aren't a good option. Yeah, that's the Japanese police station. Mark, that's an interesting idea. I like that one. That's a good idea. We'll go with that. Let me, uh, once I get back across and I missed part of it. Uh, so I'm, what I'm thinking here is we're going to layer this. So I want to have a bunch of these, the, the, greenery, the greenery. Then we will have a bunch of flowers. And then on top of this, we are going to place some of the young palms. And then we'll probably do some sort of understory brush as well. Ads. We're back to ads. I'm sorry. I'm not pushing any buttons. You can see I'm just clicking away at landscaping. I don't know what's going on. Another lovely ad. Are you guys at least getting ads that are interesting? Or is it like the stuff that I get? I feel like... So through my... Uh, so I, 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 don't, I don't want personalized ads. So I get the most random stuff ever. Uh, no ads for you. You have premium. So someone said that even though they have YouTube premium, they were seeing ads, which I thought was just crazy. That should not be a thing. So I'm glad to hear that that you're not seeing ads with uh, with YouTube premium, Monty. Uh Spence, what is my recommendation for a PC for City Skylines 2? My recommendation is that you wait. So I this is a question I actually asked in the Discord the other day. We have a few different PC setups around here. So I built a PC for my wife, one for my kids, and then I've got the PCs that I run the channel with. And then I've been putting together a PC for Master Plan Music. And that is basically all of my old stuff. Um, so I'm going to have... Well, actually, and the, the other thing is uh, we have a, a, a graphics... Uh, the Razer graphics, whatever the, the, you know, the thing where you can stick a graphics card in there. So my, my goal is to put out a video kind of going through, I mean, I only have AT and a, AMD. So that's all I'm going to be able to do is AMD, but I have everything from a 2060 to a 4090 in terms of graphics cards and for processors, um, 5,600, all the way up to my 7950 X3D. So I'm going to be testing how the game runs and hopefully providing some insight. I'll also try the Steam Deck and we'll see how it works. So I would say wait. You know, we'll have to we'll have to see how it actually shakes out once it's it. But I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't I guess I wouldn't spend a bunch of money until until you see stuff like that. Cuz who knows where you're going to best who knows what the best upgrade's gonna be? Um so ads. Some people have ads. People with YouTube premium don't have it. 
Oh yeah, I like AMD. The main reason is for me was heat. I just my office is a decent size, but it still heats up pretty quickly. And the last thing I want is to sit and roast in my office because I'm I'm gaming. That's not cool. Uh, does anyone have a pre-configured PC from Alexander PCs? I don't know what that is. But if someone knows, put it on there. Have I played the betas? No, I haven't. So I'm I am uh I have played City Skylines 2 as much as you guys have. Which is not at all. <laughs> yeah, we're doing we're doing little tiny palm trees. So this I before the stream. I was looking around the Thousand Oaks area in Southern California, and I saw what appeared to be something similar to this, where just a whole bunch of landscaping to separate this this community. And I'm pretty sure that if you were to see who, lo who lives there, it's probably all celebrities and things of that nature. So that's kind of what we're trying to do here. The one thing that's gonna be really challenging is like, it's just the scale. We, we can't really do a vanilla mansion. There's not really a way to do that. Um, and speaking of mansions, that's actually one of the builds in Clearwater County that there's a spot in the middle of Van Buren that I've been meaning to, to add some mansions. That's that's one of the builds that's coming up. Ty says we're all jealous of Biffa. Yeah. Yeah. Although the thing I'm not jealous about, I mentioned this earlier, is I don't have to lose my love of City Skylines 1 just yet. <laughs> Um, how long till you hit the node limit again? Truthfully, if I were making regular episodes, I did the math and it would probably be like 20 episodes. So I don't think we hit the node limit again. Um, and the tree limit is something you can mod out. I've already done that. So we can add as much landscaping as we want. The bigger concern really was, was the nodes. Uh, I would say, honestly, the best part of your content is the way you drive your developments, the actual reasons and stories. Yeah, that, so it's it's interesting that you say that because I didn't even realize I was doing it initially um, when I and I, I don't think I was doing it in a big way. I mean, for Bluffside Crossing, I definitely didn't have stories. We were just kind of doing things to do them. Uh, but that evolved over time. And Verde Beach, I started doing it. And I was just thinking about how in my day to day, that was something that I had experienced is that things happen because there are real people that actually, you know, are, are making development decisions for these communities, real, real home builders that decide that they want to develop a neighborhood, real people who decide that they are going to invest all of their money in a townhome apartment complex or something of that nature these are real things that happen and i wanted that to be um a part of the channel uh let's see hey phil you helped me recover from the sadness of me not getting into university with the rest of my friends i'm really sorry to hear that ajit uh or RG, uh, that's that's really a bummer i i feel for you but i, I want you to know you're going to make so many friends in college and they're going to be your lifelong friends. They're going to be people that you meet in college that you might have never thought to be friends with before college. That once you get there, you end up figuring out that maybe you should have been more open to them all along. And that's one of the things that I really appreciated about going to college. Uh, let's see. The narrative is your USP. USP. Bystander, what's USP? I don't know what I'm missing. <laughs> but I know that I don't like what I just did here. So we'll get rid of this. Um, I helped, uh, Casey says I helped you disassociate the right amount while going through divorce. I'm sorry that you went through divorce, but, or maybe not. Maybe it's good. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm glad I could help in any way. It, the thing that's been wild about uh, having a channel has been hearing all of the different ways that people use the content um, in their in their in their real world. I, I I didn't realize that I do that too. Like there there are content creators that I love watching, 
that helped me escape from the day. And um, it's a privilege to be able to, to be there with you guys for that. Uh, hi, Holger. Thanks for being here. Sebastian, I have premium, but I'd watch all the ads for you. If you have premium, you're doing more than the ads. So <laughs> don't watch any ads. Never watch an ad. Uh, please kill the parking. It looks weird. Oh, yeah, I should. And yeah, that's terrible. Truthfully, I didn't mean to have parking anywhere. Although maybe in front of the police station, it's not too bad. But this is not right. So I think that will get rid of it for us. Do the exact same thing over here. And then maybe we have some fences around here to, to... Oh, the Japanese garden. Emily, that's a great idea. I like that idea. Uh, let's see. Why am I missing this? Here it is. Uh, Zell, you love my content. Cheers from Maine. Cheers from Wisconsin. <laughs> Whatever works, Mark. <laughs> uh, Brad asks if I want people to use public transport more. Uh, here's here's where my opinion is likely going to differ from a lot of other people. I don't really care how people get around. I think that my biggest problem is that we prioritize automobiles. If you want to drive your car, that's fine. Um, drive your car. But I don't think that you should be able to drive your car 45 miles per hour down the middle of the city. I don't think that you should have priority over bikes and pedestrians and and uh, and, tra uh, and uh, buses and, 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 and what else, whatever you might have. I also don't like that vehicles seem to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and more deadly. And the all the data is right there. And it's so plain to see that this isn't good yet here we are still building uh bigger vehicles here we are still uh planning our cities around cars it's just you know it just doesn't it, it we all need to i think that we should all have the freedom to be able to get around however we want to but i do not think that's what happens necessarily all the time so yeah in response to the question i don't think I don't really care how people get around. If you if you want to get around on a bus or you want to take a train, I think that it's not for me to say that you should or shouldn't do that. It is for me to say that you should have the opportunity to take whatever mode you want. So that is that is and that's I think another thing that uh differentiates my opinion about vehicles and maybe some of the other creators out there is I just for me and this, this really stems back to um, my personal upbringing. I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but I grew up incredibly poor. Just uh, my mom had me when she was 18 and she was just very, 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 very poor. So we took the bus, not because we wanted to, but because it was the only option that we had. So when that's the only option that you have, having a vehicle becomes a mode of, of having freedom. So in the community that I was a part of, vehicles were freedom. And telling someone to take the bus was basically saying, you're gonna stay in poverty forever. And I know that in for some people, that is their perspective. So if that's if that is their perspective, then why would I why would I force them to, to share my viewpoint? So yeah. <laughs> Fence mode activated button. Yeah. Um, I wish we had better public transit in the U.S. Yeah, I agree. So since agrees with Brett Stokes wholeheartedly, the Phoenix metro area is very tough. Yeah, so the thing is, there are so many places in the U.S. in particular where you don't have the option to take to take transit, to, to ride a bike. The, the, the bike networks are disjointed. The transit is infrequent and not good. And in those instances, yeah, I do think that we've got to do better. But I just, I also am of the mindset that 
It's not for me to tell you what is right for you. I have a very rural perspective. I might. I mean, I'm from a rural area. I mean, I I, I don't think I've very I've been I've been pretty open about that. I, I I grew up in a very rural area. I'm not anymore, but it also makes me empathize with maybe those perspectives because that you know there are a lot of people who just don't. That's not their. That's not what they want. <laughs> Karsten, thank you so much for becoming an associate planner. I really appreciate that. Um, Atlas, thank you so much. You're binging the content. I really appreciate that. So your bus ride is three hours. That's ridiculous. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like uh, that to me is not providing options. So yeah. Octopolis. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. I, it's definitely different than my other streams. I'm, I'm definitely letting more out there, but. Feels good. Oh, USP, your channel's unique selling point. Okay. Yeah. That's definitely, I mean, it, it is definitely something different. I think that there's only uh, a couple of channels that are doing stories. I mean, Cities by Diana, Diana is one of them. Uh, $2.20. That's really good stories. So, yeah. Uh, Benjamin. Yeah, I, you know, I think that, I think that too often just generally in the world we can get obsessed with telling other people what they should do <laughs> i guess that's my perspective I, I i think that if we were more tolerant of other people's viewpoints and perspectives we'd all probably be a lot happier and i feel like that's been a thing over the last while that we're just as a world less tolerant of each other and more wanting to convince other people that we're right and here's the thing you might be right but there's a way to win the argument and it's to demonstrate that your ideas are the best. And rather than doing that, we just try to force our ideas on everyone else. And that's not, to me, that's not okay. Cheers from Norway. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Uh, Clint, biking in Milwaukee is deadly. Yeah, Milwaukee is, it's definitely, could use some better bike infrastructure. Uh, they do stories differently. Diana's channel lost you. Well, I think that everyone does their own unique content and you know, it's, it's, it's different. I, I love, I personally, I love, I love most of the city skylines channels that are out there. There's, there's, I, I've been, there've been very few that I have not liked. And I likewise love your, you know, love your uh, work, Diana. So my perspective, you like my perspective on cars and transit. Yeah, I mean, I know it's not for everybody. My perspective is definitely, I don't know. I just, for me, you got to be respectful of other people. That's, that's, I mean, that's what it comes down to for me. Just be respectful of other people, their beliefs, their values, their perspectives. And if we were all a little bit more respective and tolerant of other people, the world would just be a better place. So, um, yeah. So Lux, you notice I'm doing fencing so much. So th that kind of fencing is not common in the US, but this neighborhood, I think. So we're basically going to come around. Okay. So here's my, here's my, my next idea. Maybe this is a bad one. <laughs> Let me show you what I'm thinking. So we are going to make a pedestrian area and go over the top of this, but this would be so prohibitively expensive to do this entire area as a pedestrian area that we're going to break it up into small bits and we're going to do that because if we look at our land values they are just atrocious right now but we'll make this a pedestrian area and all the homes will max out that's the only way that we get the 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 values up in this area and then we'll get big homes and then we'll put a bunch of landscaping through here and i think that that is what this would be like Matt, what is my least favorite City Skylines channel? Mine. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not getting, I'm not getting goaded into that one. <laughs> I like most of them. Uh, I mean, the, the, the thing about it is everyone has their own unique perspective and flavor. I, I try, I've purposefully though, I will be honest and say that I've tried to watch 
less City Skylines content as of late. And one of the reasons for that is I don't want to inadvertently lift ideas. That is something that, you know, and I, I feel like the way that you come up with new ideas is to learn about things outside of your perspective. So I have been trying to watch other content creators outside of my genre that I respect and learn more about how they're telling stories, learn more about how they're doing everything. So that has been what I've been trying to do. This is a terrible spot for this. I'm not exactly sure where to put this thing. Um, maybe I put this close to the police station. Yeah, I think that that's what I do. Because I put this thing right over here. Although now we need a pedestrian area. as I instead make a, a little neighborhood. Uh, let's see. Do I watch any City of Skyline stuff on TikTok? No, I don't really. I So I downloaded TikTok and I just like, I don't know if I'm just too old. <laughs> just don't like it. I just, it just doesn't speak to me. Generally, I will be honest. I have been trying to make short form content because I know some people like it. I don't personally get it. So... I I think that TikTok's not for me. Uh, my thoughts on Real Civil Engineer. I love Matt. I think he's great. I've actually spoken with Matt on occasion um, on Discord. Great guy. Uh, love his content. I love how silly he is. I I want to I want to let loose a bit more like he does. I think that it's it's just a lot of fun. Um, let's see. Will I edit this uh, live into a published video? I will not. So the reason why I will not do that is so I initially I tried that and every decision I make on the channel is rooted in basically how you guys feel about the content. So anything I do. I'm just responding to what you guys are saying to me. So if I notice that a video doesn't do well, most of the time I will change something. The only times I won't M more recently, I have been disregarding some of that. And that's because with all of the city skylines two content, some of my normal content has been doing poorly. So the worst video that I put out in a long time is actually the casino video that I put out recently. And I am probably more proud of that one than I should be. <laughs> so uh, for me, I I just, um, when I make changes, it's because of you guys. And the live streaming, when I cut it down, I cut one down and it took a lot of work and it had no views. So. Let's see. Collab with me and RCE, you never know. <laughs> I mean, definitely, I, I I will I will not I will unabashedly admit that the whole reason I put together the one tile cities I saw his and I was like, you know what I want to do that. That looks like a fun challenge, and it's it's inspired me. The next video on Saturday is another challenge video. And I don't know if it's one that's been done before, but I'm going to encourage uh, Diana. I want you to try the challenge. I challenge you to try the challenge. And if El Demetrius is in here, I challenge you as well. I will pin your videos in a pinned comment. It's a super, super easy challenge. Atlas, I'm glad you like the casino build. I had, I had a lot of fun with that one. But yeah, uh, the casino build. So one of the things that I don't love about YouTube is they give you this little graphic that shows how your video is performing relative to all of your other videos. So the City Skylines 2 videos that I put out have just been like every single one of them performs better than the last, which is great, except that the audience has changed. So I mentioned the partner manager thing. I actually mentioned this to my partner manager that I was concerned that the audience for the channel was changing and that I could end up harming the channel with <laughs> the 
reaction content. <laughs> so uh, same thing with the challenges content, but honestly, you just got to keep evolving and doing what's fun. And I like making the city skylines two content. I really, the challenge video was just the most fun that I've had in a while. So, and I, I, with all the scripted videos, I just kind of needed a break. Like they are really taxing. <laughs> I guess this is maybe the best way to put it. So having a video where I don't have a script, I don't have any thoughts about what I'm doing beforehand. I just I come up with the challenge. I record what I do. And if, it, if I screw up, I screw up. It's just a lot of fun. Just so much fun. Uh, yeah, I'm still streaming. <laughs> um, and on that, we will, I will probably end it soon. My, my wife and family will be here soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, one thing I do, what was I going to say completely lost that thought, but it was a question I wanted to ask you guys and now I lost it. So I'll have to think of it before I, before I leave. Uh, attempt to build a line. <laughs> I thought about that. Diana, you stopped making the City Skylines 2 content because of that. Yeah. So wild growth with people who might not be interested in the channel generally. So definitely a consideration. Why am I breaking up the pedestrian district? Basically because pedestrian districts are super expensive. And the price is based upon the size of the district. So I want the land value bonus. Do you see that because of this pedestrian area, the land values are already going up? And the buildings are starting to level? But I, so basically I'm cheesing the game. <laughs> I'm just kind of, yeah, kind of making this crazy. Uh, yes, FedEx failed me. They didn't bring the package. They actually, they said one, 150 by 150 at the latest. And it is currently 416 by me. <laughs> um... The skinny stream asks how I'm doing this without power lines. So I had to use the 81 tiles mod. So at this point, I'm just embracing it. So basically, if we go in into the 81 tiles two mod, you can transmit water and power without the need for pipes and power lines. And I ran out of nodes. So if I wouldn't have enabled these, the series is done. The city's done. We're, we're not playing anymore. But with these enabled, I'm able to continue playing. So I guess if we're going to do that, I might as well fully embrace it and just, just roll with it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm cottage cheesing my game. I am. <laughs> uh, say I'm going to finish the, the stream soon is, is a call for disaster. <laughs> yeah, I'm honestly, I it's, I don't have. I don't know where disasters are set at right now, but I want to say that they're fairly high. So I'm surprised. Not, no, I guess they're not that high. For the last couple of minutes, we'll crank it up. We'll see what happens. Um, David asks what I think about power lines being under the road in City Skylines 2. Um, I'm I'm okay with it because we still have the option to put power lines out if we want. We have the low voltage lines. I love that transmission lines actually matter at this point. To me, that's pretty outstanding. And I think that the, the whole power mechanic generally is pretty cool. I'm a little less excited about the water mechanic. And I think I, I kind of expressed that a bit in the video that to me, it seemed, it kind of seemed, if you're going to put that level of effort into the, into the power mechanic, it seemed really strange to me that the water mechanic is basically the city skylines water mechanic and some things that were in like was it sim city 4 where you could have desalination plants that's not available and to me that's just absolutely bizarre and i don't i don't get it i think it's really disappointing so yeah that was kind of where i'm at and it looks like my family is actually here <laughs> <laughs> so I might be ending this soon. Um, let's look for the fires at the end. <laughs> yes, I don't think my my computer's not gonna blow up. My my room is definitely warm right now. So I I I see you, Gambit. This was a great. It was a great build. Now I don't know if today was a great build. I didn't really do a lot, <laughs> but 
I definitely had fun chatting with you guys. <laughs> um, my computer is definitely not going to blow up. My, I am currently, I had to open up my door and one of my daughters is in the room now because of that. So, um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. De desalination plants. It, to me, it's all the way back to SimCity 2000 and SimCity 3000. So I don't personally understand why that's not a feature it seems like something that probably should be but it's not so i just it's fine it's fine but i i i'm hoping that it seems to me like they've really organized this game well they've kind of gone into thank you so much uh, gfy for the super chat to me it seems like they've really thought through the way the game expands <laughs> did i do the strongest shape <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> well rce will love that <laughs> uh to to me it seems like uh, they've organized the game well and i just hope that they've organized the ability to add more water options in the future that's something that i'll be looking forward to because it to me it's just it seems it seems like it's not fully baked just yet um just put the vods out raw that's my game plan this thing will go law or this thing will go raw right as soon as, as soon as it's av available to uh to to, to to go out it will you love the casino video i so i love that one i thought it was a great one I, I i i do not even though it performed terribly i would make that video again uh over and over and over like that is the kind of content that i i feel proud of making so i would do it again uh, Lemon Venom, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, give Erfina a promo, uh, a promotion on Discord. She's so nice. I think she got one. I thought I think she got heart of the community. If she didn't, I, I'll talk. Yeah, I'll talk with the mods. But she's still in uh, City Hall, so I assume. My assumption. <laughs> Very humble, strong shape. <laughs> So I think what I'm doing right now, chatting with 1,100 of you, I must be really weirding up my daughter. She kind of just stood in the corner of the room staring at me. More ads. I'm very sorry. but I, So I'm seeing these little emojis popping up, at least on my end. <laughs> these palms are a punch in the face. <laughs> I thought about replacing all the trees at one point, but I didn't. Just figured we'll just do it the way it, the way it was. Uh, can I do train, tram, bus tours at Verde Beach? You know what? That maybe. So again, from what I've done, so I, I put up, I put some of those out for Bluffside Crossing, and people didn't like them. Nobody watched them. So what I might do is sneak them in, or or add them uh, as unlisted videos and just leave leave a link in the community tab. If you want to check these out, do it. The emojis are little reactions. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them. 100 hearts, smiley faces, laughing. <laughs> so yeah. Is this the old one or the new game? This is the old one. I don't have access to the new game. Um, I think your numbers will change again once uh, City's gone. So yeah, I, I think... Um, yeah, I mean, interest in the channel has is, is been much higher now than before, like five times higher. So I, I assume that that will die down <laughs> once City Skylines 2 comes out. So, yeah. Uh, fire check time. Let's see. We look like we're doing okay. We're doing all right. No fires. <laughs> so some of these things so it's been it, I, I want to say it was Beast Wigglehausen that pointed out in uh, Discord that I'm hitting a bunch of other limits too so I do wonder one of the limits I saw one of the more bizarre limits is that there is a disaster limit so I don't know if we actually I'm seeing all the hearts I love them <laughs> I see 100s I see hearts no pipes under the road the whole stream I know I know Deleting the, the entire water system was tough. One of the things I do plan on doing, and maybe this is maybe another, I'll ask one more poll. 
water pipes custom background so i thought about to, to commemorate Bear Day Beach. So to commemorate all these, I've been talking with some other creators. I wanted to come up with a way to stitch together a high resolution image of the city that you could look at the street names and maybe at the very end, go through and name a whole bunch of streets and name a bunch of stuff and really be able to dive deep into it. So I went through and I wanted to photo stitch a bunch of these together. So I went through, I, Nicolay Bay was my guinea pig. And I thought I'll come in at about this level and I'll take 80 pictures of it and try to stitch it all together. And I really struggled with that caps. Thanks for becoming an associate planner. Appreciate that. Um, and it just, it didn't work. I was, I I've been trying to avoid going back to Adobe. So I used affinity. It didn't work. And then I brought it to a bunch of other creators, Teddy Radko and I have been talking a lot back and forth about this. Teddy came up with some really interesting ideas. Doesn't seem like anything's going to work just yet. One of the things that, that Teddy actually mentioned though was using GIS to put this together. So that is certainly something that I can I'm I'm contemplating. And so that's that's one thing. Um I want to be able to, to save something with these cities. And I think that on the website, my goal was always to launch the website with these overview maps. And uh $2.20 actually said that that he put together something similar, but also struggled with it. And it wasn't an easy process. Um, but the one thing that I was struggling with in particular is when you put these together, you get these lighting effects that are really pronounced in certain areas. And $2.20 said that, uh, that, that he actually removed the water and that made so much sense. So um, I might, I might cave and get uh, the, the creative suite because they have that new, AI generation feature and the water would be like the perfect thing to generate. Doc, you missed the original 5B1C crew? Yeah. That was it was a good time. It was a good time. Uh can you do auto panoramic photo in Google Photos? Oh, I didn't think to do that. Google <laughs> Of course, sometimes the simplest option is the easiest one. I should do that. Um I'll give that a shot. CSL for making maps. Yeah, I so I brought it up with with some other with some modders and I was, you know, kind of wondering, you know, is there a mod that does CSL map view but for screen caps and not not the vectors? But yeah, it didn't work. No one no one knows of anything. So uh, I think there's a lot of interest in it though. So I'm I would love to see if that were something that uh is available in City Skylines too. I mean Everyone loves maps, I think. If you play a game like this, you like maps. Let's see. Water pipes custom background. Okay. So what I was thinking of doing with the water pipes background is going through the last episode that has the water pipes and just basically making a vector background 4K and providing it as, as something that you could just download if you want to. So that's what I will plan on doing. I will get that put together at some point. Uh... You're a sucker for maps, me too. Ah, uh, yeah. Have I ever looked into Microsoft Image Composite Editor? No, I have not. I will look that up. Adobe Lightroom has a pano stitch. So I, I have an old version of Lightroom. I wonder if that would work. So the problem is most of the apps that do this are panoramic apps. And as a result, they work for linear pictures, but not for um, the whole stitch, like a whole square image like this. So what my idea is, is I could pop into a GIS and geo reference these images together. Cause then I'm, even if they're a little distorted, it's fine. I can just pull it so that they fit nicely together. So that's, that's kind of where my head's at. So Simon, the reason I haven't done it already is I am not a QGIS user. My my wife is a Q, QGIS user and I had to swallow my pride and ask her for help with GIS. <laughs> I have 10 years of experience, maybe more than that. 15 years using ArcGIS or using ArcMap, but I have QGIS available to me. So, yeah. I've got to ask her. She told me 
that I could do it, but I think I'd have to watch The Witcher with her. I haven't done that yet. <laughs> so. Um, Aperture let you do layers of strips. So mad Apple killed it. Is it gone? Nicole, you still remember the, old, the oldest road in Verde Beach is this one right here. Uh, Main Street. And River Street. Yep, that one too. So I do think that we are going to end this soon, but I will we'll, we'll zoom around. I'm going to finish the rest of this off stream in the next Verde Beach. I will landscape this up, add more fences, make it look nice. But generally, I think we're moving in a good direction. I want to see some of these buildings level up. I was hoping that all the buildings would look more like this or m better yet. There is this one. This is kind of what I want for all of the buildings. This to me feels better than, you know, anything else that we can have in this area. Mr. Slendy, thank you so much for the support. First live stream I've caught in years, uh, in the years I've been sub. Love the content. You made me rediscover my love for the game a couple years ago, and I've learned so much watching your content. Keep it up. Thank you so much. Appreciate the kind words and the support. It means a ton to me. Uh, do I remember the Switchback community? Oh, yeah. Biffa named that one. <laughs> Yeah, definitely did. Astro, thank you so much uh, for the support. Eight months as an associate planner. Thank you for the stream. Uh, thank you for the company, everybody. And I really, really, really mean it. The support has been outstanding. I never set out to to have this channel. I never thought that it would be what it what it is and has become. But it has really been a joy and a privilege. I feel like a really lucky person to to have this opportunity. And I really... Um, I really mean it when I say that. Uh, thank you. Uh, and David, thank you so much for the five gifted memberships. Uh, anyone who's a gifted member, look for that community tab post where there are two videos up there right now. Uh, one of them is the Saturday video. It's a challenge video. The other one is a Clearwater County video that uh, is that needs some work, <laughs> but it's it's in a good place for the most part. Um, yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I think we, we've got to end this the right way. There's, you know the way that we've got to end it. So we are going to find our new neighborhood, which, first of all, uh, 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 we got to name this thing. Before we leave, before we leave, I want to see some good names. We don't have any lore behind this neighborhood. I got to think about that. But I need, I need one. So let's see. Diana, been here for three years. Thank you so much. It's been great watching you grow as well. The switchback community haunts you. It haunts me too. <laughs> I think I must be ahead of most of you guys. Because I don't see any names. So I'm going to choose the next name of someone that comes up. All right. Here is their name. Termel. I saw someone named Termel in the chat. So this is Termel Place. That's what we're going to call this neighborhood. Actually, Termel Estates. There we go. Termel Estates. <laughs> so let's take this out the right way. We've got to set ourselves up. So we'll start here and then zoom way, way out to here. And do it right. And then we've got to have our song. So I need to figure out how to search for it. <laughs> All right. And then we'll get this thing all set up. All set up and do it the right way. All right. I want to thank you all so much for joining. It's it's absolutely a privilege to, to have a moment of your time. It's a privilege to be able to bring these uh, streams, these videos to you. I appreciate everything. I don't ever take it for granted. So thank you so much. So let's see Verde Beach out the correct way. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.